So how long do you think Hank has to to make good on this? 24 hours. Oh, oh wow, and that's from Coach Joe Missoula. Well, I, I, I mean, was thinking – because I want to, I want, I want to, to, to yeah. commemorate. Well, to commemorate the bet, I'm, I'm gonna do it uh, banner night. I'll, I'll be in the uh, building. No, 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 because then we're on the next season. Wait, because yes, yes, yeah. then now you people like you, Hank, will be the reason why we struggle next year. Because <laughs> we're trying to get ready for the next season. On today's part of my take, we have Boston Celtics head coach Joe Missoula, fresh off their championship. Incredible to get Coach Missoula on the show. We're going to talk about the Celtics winning. We're going to talk about Hank. We are going to put in what happens with Game 5 of the Stanley Cup Final uh, after we talk about the Celtics. So we will be talking some hockey. We have Hot Seat, Cool Throne. And then we have a show announcement after our interview with Coach Missoula that everyone will want to listen to. And it's all brought to you by our friends at DraftKings. Hitting the links this weekend, the pros are... Get in on all the tea to green action at DraftKings Sportsbook. And if you're new to DraftKings, you got to check this out. New customers bet 5 bucks to get 150 in bonus bets instantly. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Use code TAKE. New customers bet 5 bucks and get 150 in bonus bets instantly. We got some golf, some good golf coming up. Is it the Travelers weekend? It's fifth the major. Travelers, the fifth major. So go right now, check out DraftKings. New customers bet 5 bucks to get 150 in bonus bets instantly. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Use code TAKE. New customers bet 5 bucks, get 150 in bonus bets instantly. So that's code TAKE only on DraftKings. The crown is yours. Okay, let's go. Welcome to Part of My Take, presented by DraftKings. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use code TAKE. That's code TAKE for new customers to get 150 in bonus bets when you bet just 5 bucks. Only on DraftKings. The crown is yours. Today is Wednesday, June 19th, and the Boston Celtics are champions of the world. Congrats, Hank. The summer of Hank is upon us. It is nigh. The long... Long drought for Boston. All the way back to 2018 is finally over. Five and a half years. I know. It's really incredible like that you survived this long. Maybe the, the biggest drought of your entire life as a sports fan. I think it is. I'm so glad that it's over because you must have been in hell for those five and a half years. Uh, but the Celtics, they did in five games. You thought they'd do it in six. Well, I bet them to win it under five and a half games. So that's, that's just false. You said on this very show. Yeah, I did say listen, on the show. Six. Listen, Hank, it's, it's this is going to be it's a true, Hank wet true. suck fest. You yeah. don't need to come in hot I'm right sorry, now. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm Congratulations, sorry. Hank. You're better than us as a sports fan. The city of Boston is better than us as sports fans. Um, I'm very jealous of everything you've gotten to experience, but you had a great team, and Jalen Brown proved all the haters wrong, and he mm -hmm. is he's in that top five now. He's the best player on the team. Jason Kidd was 100% correct. Uh, congratulations to Jalen Brown. Uh, very happy for you, Hank. Yeah. Thank Hank. you. Hank. Thank you. Tell Thank us. You. Tell us the floor. By the way, oh, for people oh. who, are, who are wondering, we're, we're going we're gonna to tape uh, after the Stanley Cup, so you'll hear us talk, react to game five if there's any if the Panthers end up winning and everyone's like, why didn't you say Panthers as well? We yeah. will if they do. Uh, one more thing real quick about Jalen Brown. You know how I know he's the man and he's Batman on that team? Yeah. He wore the wire. Yeah. He wore the wire. And Wendy taught us that's the man. The man yeah. wears the wire. Yeah. I do think they kind of switched that person game by game, but that's fine. Uh, it was a great night. There's truly nothing better. The day after, you know, as fun as it is to win a championship that night, you don't go to sleep until like 2 a.m. You watch every video. You watch the locker room. You see all the quotes. There's nothing better than the day after winning a championship as a sports fan, taking it all in, looking at all the old takes. There was a five-minute compilation of all of yeah. every single sports show saying Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum will never work together, break them up. And that's just the best stuff. Uh, it was it was an emotional night. It was it was great to watch. Brad Stevens is you know the greatest GM of all time. Danny Ainge, recurring guest. Well, well up, you think Brad Stevens is the greatest GM of all time? I think he's got to be. He's in a, all in time a conversation. All time. 
one title? He is in the conversation. We are having the conversation. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Yeah, I mean, the team is set up for a great, great run, which is the most exciting Oh, part. you're thinking about the next one. I am thinking about I mean, you have to think about the next one. It's like, why, why? We made it to Game 7 last year. Jason Tatum rolled his ankle. They almost came back from 3-0. We've been in the Eastern Conference Finals, nothing but success. We win a championship now, and we're you set said, up. We're set up for maybe the a mini dynasty, I, maybe a real one. Oh, I, I totally, no, I'm saying already a mini dynasty. No, 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 no. I, I completely agree with Hank that he is laser focused on the next one. He is wearing a shirt that says Banner 18 on it. Well, yeah, you got to celebrate him when you get him. Shouldn't you wear a shirt that says Banner 19? Question mark. No, I like the Celtics had a, a blank banner in their practice facility. Uh, signifying the next one now they get to fill it out the well then are they gonna have another blank banner yeah okay um the game was never really in doubt it was the celtics coronation uh i the the funniest part of the game i thought was the last 10 minutes when tatum was trying very hard to get the mvp uh it turned into a little bit of it was lucas stat padding yeah and then jalen brown and jason tatum just going for that trading off iso but yeah you guys i mean the celtics were the best team by far in the NBA this year, it showed in the regular season. It showed in the playoffs. They had an incredible run. They only lost three games. Uh, I do think I don't want it to become a full glaze off of Hank. Uh, the story of Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum and like everything they've gone through, that is why you watch sports, and that is the culmination of like both from a fan perspective and from their perspective of putting in the hard work and trying to get up to the top of the mountain, failing, 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 and then reaching that point is very cool. Jalen Brown is like an all-time success story in player development with, you know, when we had a Danny Ainge on and he was talking about, you know, his game was far from being refined. Same with Jason Tatum, all the growth he's had. It's very cool, Hank. It's very cool. You guys, you guys did it. And it, it, it it does get to shut up all the haters that thought those two guys couldn't coexist. And you're right, Brad Stevens. I mean, the the Drew Holiday and the Kristaps Porzingis moves were all time. I I wonder who had a worse Tuesday, Marcus Smart or Ime Udoka. It's got to be Udoka. Marcus Smart is definitely happy, probably a little bit bittersweet. Yeah, obviously, but. Udoka just had to not be horny. Yeah, Udoka dropped, fumbled the bag. Yeah. Marcus Smart, it wasn't really his choice, but he does get to say, you know, he helped the culture and and Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. He was instrumental in in their you know upbringing as players. So he, you know, I'm sure he's happy for them. Obviously, it's it is it is sad, like it's bittersweet. I'm sure, but it's definitely Udoka. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I would probably agree with that. Marcus Smart, though, not a great day either. No, I, I don't think he was. I don't think it was much bittersweet as much as much as it was bitter for Marcus Smart, just because, like, those are the guys that you played with. You probably really wish you were on that team, especially considering how this year went for him. But And they needed the guys who they brought in f- for him yeah. to get over the hump. Yeah, uh, although... Drew Holiday was the difference maker. Drew, Drew Holiday, Holiday was, was incredible. I, I still... Bucks fans will get mad. I still think that, like, I don't understand that. Yeah, they just gave him away. I, and they let the Celtics... I know they didn't directly trade him to the Celtics, but they opened the door for the Celtics to get him. Yeah, uh, kind of a, a head scratching move on that one. But KP Kristaps Porzingis, uh, he did play. Hank was right. They they got him in the rotation. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of people were questioning whether or not he actually should have been in the rotation. Mm-hmm. He was he was a massive liability last night. They were just going after him. They were just like, we're going to take a three. We're going to get spacing, and he's not going to be within ten feet. I'm glad that he got to to show how tough he was and get to the game because he's probably in some serious pain today dealing with that but yeah you guys you guys walloped the uh Mavericks so hard that you didn't even need a fourth guy on defense for a lot of the time they were just a much better team Celtics have been the best team all year the best team all playoffs congratulations Hank uh you're better than us question yes well we're, let's glaze a little bit more Max you want to glaze a little you got to say something you want me to, I can get sentimental too yeah you know, get when... sentimental and then I have some uh, some follow-up questions big cow remembers he was there when I started at Barcel. Basically, for the first year, two years, I was thinking I was getting fired every step of the step of the way. So I was like trying to think of things to do so that I could get some level of job security. At the time, there was no Celtics blogger, so I started blogging the Celtics. Like, oh, you know, I'm 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 blogging the Celtics. I'm doing stuff day to day. That was basically right after the Paul Pierce, Kevin Garnett trade when the rebuild happened, and so seeing it go from that team to developing, it was before they even drafted Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, like a year or two before. And so just seeing it all kind of culminate into, you know, 
when they when they won the first championship, I was a freshman in high school. That was kind of the start of my adulthood. And then it's like 16 years later, 31, this whole, you know, eight years of, of my life in the Celtics. It was just, it was a beautiful, beautiful night. Some say that you had a process and you trusted it. Big time, yeah, yeah. That's where Brad Stevens and Brad Stevens, they the craziest part, he developed them as a coach. Like he knew Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum as a coach. He developed that team. They overperformed when he was the coach. They were rebuilding, but they still made the playoffs. They still fought. They went to Game Seven against LeBron when Jason Tatum. I think that was the Jason Tatum's nineteen or twenty year. Mm-hmm. And then he became the GM. Got in. He had a Doka who was a players coach. He, you know, fumbled the bag, and then they brought in another, even better football guy, like the best coach you could ever have, local guy, Providence players coach, to just make him that much better. Got Porzingis. Got Drew Holiday. Danny Ainge set the foundation, and then Brad Stevens just yeah can made it even, happen. Can you even truly say that you have a great culture though, if you do things like not even give Grant Williams a tribute video? <laughs> mm. You did see that he was he was pissed yeah. about that. He said. I was pissed. I was definitely pissed about not getting a tribute video. Uh, the Did tribute you see video, the video of Jalen Brown walking past him? Y- yeah, I saw he, some of that. There was like Jalen Br- Jalen Brown and, and uh, Grant Williams like reconnect. He was walking down a hallway just giving people high fives, and he gave him a high five like he was just a, like a security guard or something. <laughs> and then talked to like a lady with her baby for for way longer than he acknowledged Grant Williams. Then went to Taco Fall and goes, "I love you Taco." Like he didn't say anything to Grant Williams. He, uh, and then Taco, you could tell he was like, you know, yeah. "Love you Taco." Like we're we're boys. Do that you, tribute video needs to happen for Grant. Yeah. Do you, do you think he, he did Grant Williams everyone's ragging on him. That game 7 against like he did have a huge huge game for the Celtics game 7 against the Bucks. Do you, but it's why would you go to that? Yeah, I don't know. Why would you go to that? I don't know. <laughs> do, do you think Jalen Brown was the deserving MVP? Yeah, I thought the votes, they put the votes out, I think it was, you know, seven or eight to four, or, you know, he had three or four more, which is which is fair. He he's performed slightly better in the finals. I also, Jason Tatum did lead the team in points, rebounding, and assists for the playoffs, so it's like, it just shows, and, and Jason Tatum said it after, I don't, it's a media thing to be like, oh, try and drive a wedge into him, but like, Kobe didn't, Kobe won two finals MVPs, like Steph Kirk, Andre Iguodala won, Andrew Wiggins won, like... It's not that big a deal as people are trying, even though they just won the championship, mm-hmm. even though they've been talking shit about him for so long, they're still trying to be like, there's issues here. We would never do that. Yeah. Yeah. We would never do that. Yeah, J- I do think Jalen is clearly the better player. I, I do think, uh, I don't think Andrew Wiggins ever won a finals MVP. Oh, Steph Curry won that. I thought he yeah, won. Yeah, Steph Curry won that. Uh, I do think Jalen Brown was deserving MVP winner because if you look at this series, which wasn't really competitive, the only time that you could point to it and say, oh, this was the game that I thought the Mavs would win or you know, be at least up for it was game three going back to Dallas and his second half in that game basically ended the series. Yeah. Like he he, he single-handedly ended the series there. So I, I do think he should have won MVP. Um, Tatum tried hard at the end. Uh, I'm very happy for Al Horford. That was cool. Mm-hmm. I also got a little – like it was it, it was cool watching uh, Jason Tatum throw D- Deuce Tatum up in the air. That picture like if is – If you can't get emotional about that, you are you got you got a cold heart. All-time picture. Uh, Max, I would like to hear you maybe compliment Hank. No, thank you. I would like to pass on that. Okay. All right. Max is passing. Max, what were your thoughts? Celtics won. Okay. That's Good a, thoughts. Is that a thought? The, uh, that's, that, that's what's going on in this head. Yeah, Although, not a lot say, going on in that head. Are you happy for Hank? No. As a person, um, a little bit. No, yo, uh, Max, come on, come on, Max. You can't do this, Max. That's bad karma, but that's it just is. Philly scumbaggery. That You've is bad won a karma. billion championships. I don't. I'm not like happy that you got you've your won championships. One. It's not like you've never you. won. I mean, you did beat Couple. the Patriots in the Super Bowl. Couple, we, we did. Um, no, I don't. I don't care. But it, you, the way you were saying that, you were like everyone doubted, doubted them, said that they couldn't win a championship together. That'll be great when that story is said about Embiid. Oh, that's what. And that's who? What, that's what I was. Maxi. Maxi. Yeah. But well, like, I feel like he's had four enough? teammates that he actually has just run out of town. Well, there's Al Horford. So uh, there's True Holiday. Jimmy Butler. This Arden, is your moment, Hank. Why are you doing Simmons. this? Don't let him drag yeah. you down. This is your moment. Yeah. No, you're right. It is. And, you don't think that'll be a story of everyone being like, "Oh yeah, everyone said Embiid couldn't win win the big one, and then he wins the big one." Yeah, you're right. It is. There's yeah. not. There's nothing better than that moment. I'm not gonna say I hope it happens for you because it's probably not. But it, there is nothing. You're right that there's nothing better than than when people say that. Yeah. And you can just be like, 
send the picture with with them holding the championship trophy. Mm-hmm. So you're thinking mini dynasty loading. I'm already thinking I was looking at that picture and I'm like the best picture ever is going to be when it's reversed. When we win another championship, Jason Tatum's the play the finals MVP. Oh, so Jaylen you're Brown. sounds like you're building a wedge. So you are no, 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 no. how Jason Tatum needs to win a finals MVP to be on the same level as I'm Jaylen just thinking Brown. of how like how sick that picture will be. You think Tatum will play well enough in the future finals? Of course. Okay. It's interesting though because it's the day after you guys win a championship. And you're, right. you're already thinking about, in the back of your head. This kind of stinks that Jason didn't get MVP. Tatum needs to get one to even it up. <laughs> yeah, that's no. kind of what you just said. It's like there's a rivalry. It's like there's a mini Philly Boston rivalry. No, I, was, I, I'm just thinking of then. Then what? What do they say? The the because it's the, crazy how quickly people jump to that. The tension though on when they were announcing the Finals MVP was the best yeah. part of the game. Oh yeah, like that was the most yeah. thrilling part well, of the game. I also think if I could be like a little bit serious about basketball here, I think that that does a disservice to the Celtics as a whole because. If you just take Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum and you put those two up against some of the other uh, big twos in the league, I don't necessarily think that they're the best two in the league. I think that there's some other teams that might have better. Well, they are right now. Better duo. No, no. The the rest of the Celtics. Yeah. Like, the Celtics were an awesome team. Yeah, they were. They, like, Jason and Jalen are very, very good. They're elite basketball players. They both should have made one of the tiers of, of first team All-NBA. They're the Pistons. Oh, oh, the, 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 like the uh, the mid two thousands Pistons. That's correct. That that's this. They ended star. They ended star power. Need need star power to win finals. Last night. Yeah. Well, if you were to take like the starting five, even the the top six or seven guys in the rotation, the Celtics are without a doubt the best team in the NBA. Like their depth is insane. They're very very good. So when you boil it down to Jason or Jalen. You know which one of these guys is going to be the guy that that single handedly carries? That's never going to happen with this team, right? No, and that's the beauty. It's a it's a team sport. Like I don't root for one of them more than I root for the other. I Sounds root, like I will be. Just rooting, yeah, you're I rooting for the Celtics. Celtics. No, I want. Yes, that you are. To you just said that. Just for the media, because then it's like this is what they're going to run run with for the next mm. year. You are the media. Yeah, you you are the media. You host. I'm part not of our I'm, I'm not running for it. I'm I'm happy for the Celtics. I'm happy for the team. It is uh, like, like I said, Brad Stevens. Deserves as much credit as anyone. Like, yeah, Brad Stevens. Obviously, not playing the game, but Joe Missoula, Derek White. Brad Porzingis. Stevens made the moves to get Sam Hauser. Was yeah. incredible, uh, hitting threes. The Do you want to do the reveal? The shirt reveal, yeah. No, the take off boats. your hat and show everyone the, the shaved head. Uh, no, but I do have a plan. Oh, okay. Okay. Plans are important. I I'd have, like to hear this plan. I have volunteered myself. Oh, you're gonna do charity, you motherfucker! To go to uh, it's not long enough. The first home game, banner night, and I'll be in attendance with a fully bald, shaved head during football season. Yeah, wow! It would be, be like a weeknight, probably. Okay. Also, the opposite of charity. Yeah, yeah, that is. I thought he was gonna do like the deal. loves for locks, <laughs> locks for love. Yeah, 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 locks for love. His hair is not long enough okay. for that. I was yeah. nervous that he was gonna flip Ooh, it on us. Locks, Lockwood for. Yeah. Oh, yeah. see, big cat. The thing about me is when I no, we actually might get cut my hair off. I'm going to triple give it to charity, charity because I want people who are less fortunate to have have my hair. Hank yeah. doesn't think to, about other people that way. I don't think anyone wants to say. So, Hank, you 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 deserve uh, your happiness. Uh, again, I don't. I don't know. Does he? No, he deserves his, to. He deserves his happiness. The happiness that he has. There's something to back it up. Yeah, I'm not wishing for him to be happy, but he deserves the happy. Are we saying he deserves it in terms of he's worked so? Actually, yeah, you. No, he deserves to be happy right right now. now because of what happened. Correct. I also think five and a half years is a long time. You yeah. put in, you put in the the grind. So respect. That's crazy. And 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 there is like like I said before, like the, the Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum. People can do revisionist history, but there was a very big debate of whether those two guys can do it together, and they proved they could. Did you like Jason uh, Jalen Brown holding up the trophy with his left hand? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, nice I like touch. that. Um, because he can't dribble with his left. He's he's the Finals MVP. That is true. Mm-hmm. He's the Finals MVP, which is pretty crazy. It's actually the most amazing thing ever. Wore the wire to be the Finals MVP without only using one hand. Yeah, imagine if he could use to <laughs> be every MVP. Uh, can I? Well, let's talk about the Mavs real quick. Um, also the clip, and again, I, I shouldn't, I shouldn't. It should be positive. Oh. And I got people were wait, mad at me for Wait, being what are you gonna say? Did you see the video? And it, it was it was a it was a good move. Kyrie, you know, he lost oh. but the leadership, but he waited on the court and dapped up every Mavericks player as they were walking off. Like he was he was the first one in line. He stepped back and then 
was dapping all the players up, waited for the last person, and followed him in the tunnel. It was just green and white confetti just falling on his face. You liked that? Mm-hmm. I liked it. Yeah. I liked it a lot. You liked it a lot. I liked it a lot. He also kind of you, you sound like you're getting horny right now. It, it was I, I and I didn't want to even you know I was I was just tweeting about the Celtics. I didn't want to say, like say say it, but it was I watched it many times. He gave a little shout out to the fans too on the way out. They're, yeah, they're no, he's. At him. I feel like the rivalry's over. It's a hundred percent over. He hasn't won in Boston, and it's like he you know one in thirteen, one in thirteen, and I think zero and unlucky, zero and nine or something at in in Boston. Yeah, damn. Yeah. So so what I was gonna say with the Mavs, uh, as bad as that finals was, I feel like you can. I would buy stock in Luca because it feels like he's getting shit on. He's twenty five years old, and he's made All NBA. I think four out of his first five years, something like that. Uh, and Derek Lively is going to be really good for a really long time. They probably need to add a couple more pieces, but like, did you hear what he? But Mavs fans like what? At his press conference after he did the, I might be a free. Like I got some just things to think about. Oh, I didn't see that. What does he have to think about? That is what they say when there might be doing be free agent or something. Oh, interesting. right. Is that I don't I don't know. That's what they are saying when they might be doing free. I agent. think Luca just needs to get in better shape. Because he, this entire finals, every first half, he was the best player on the court, and then he would start to fade. And that is credit to Celtics defense, which was phenomenal. But either way, I would be buying stock in the Mavs because as much as that sucked and you were far away from winning the title because it wasn't really a competitive series, uh, you do have like a young nucleus that feels like it will be competing for a lot of years going forward. I mean, Derek Lively, yes. I, I don't know if you're going to get the same – Kyrie and Luca magic at the same time that we had. I don't think it, I think Luca's going to be Luca's the the path that Luca's on. He's going to win a title. I would put I'd I'd bet it right now. Luca will win a title. I think he probably will. I just don't know if it's going to be with Kyrie. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I'm just saying like Luca is the Mavs can keep Luca. You should be like if you're a Mavs fan. You as much as today sucks. You should be like, well, we have Luca, so we have a chance to win a title essentially for the next seven to ten years. Yeah, I mean, the way that your team's constructed, you you uh, silenced a lot of critics when you beat the Timberwolves, when you beat the Nuggets. Or no, the Timberwolves beat the Nuggets, you beat the Timberwolves. That was a big series for you guys. It's not a fluke that you're there. Yeah. You're, you're that good offensively, and the defense is pretty good, but the problem with the Celtics is they're just too deep. Uh, what are you finding, Hank? You finding this? I'm trying to make sure he said that. I don't think he did. I don't see it. I, I have it. one thing that we didn't talk about. Actually, oh. memes brought this to my attention. Okay, because I have another thing that's maybe going to get a little negative that I don't. Maybe I'm, Hank I'm should leave negative. the room. Okay. For but go ahead. Well, mine is the Jason Tatum Kevin Garnett. Speech. Yes. So that was it. That was what I was going to say. Hank, would you like to speak at all about the fact that Jason Tatum has negative aura? I think we have a, a real life uh, case of this in our own own crew, and and it's just something with the younger generation. Like everyone, it's just all nostalgia. In today's day and age, it's just you know they wear the old jerseys, mm-hmm. they just remake the same movies. Mm-hmm. Everyone's on social media, the memes. He has a little bit of that. Like he just kind of speaks in memes mm-hmm. and thinks in memes. Oh, what do you mean with your own shot at memes? Who, with our own crew, who do you mean? Memes speaks in memes. memes does speak? He in thinks memes. in memes. Yeah. yeah. He thinks he in memes. In so you well. think Jason Tatum speaks and thinks in memes. It just didn't feel authentic, which, again, this is very nitpicky because they just won the title. And they, it's did, not really they did pe- do it. They did do it. He said we did it. And they, yeah. they did it. And then he also did the Kanye at the after party. Uh-oh. That was a, he's just, yeah, speaks in memes. Yeah, he speaks in memes. What was the Kanye? It was like uh, everyone was wondering what would happen if we didn't win the title. I guess they'll never know. Oh, okay. For, yeah. for a second, I thought no, he, not the other. Kind. He might have like thanked his doctor. I'm not going to say no. what kind of doctor. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> uh, it was. Uh, he. I don't. Honestly, I don't. It I, was awkward. I, I do. I don't give a nor shit. Nor should if you. He doesn't have aura. No, no. Nor should you. But it. it and he does. You, would you? Well, I don't know. I don't know if he has aura. Jalen Brown has aura. Jalen Brown has aura. Wearing the mask. Yeah. Something about Jalen Brown. He like. He, he seems <laughs> yeah, very mean, cool. Yeah. What. Would you say Jalen Brown has more aura than Jason Tatum? No. Oh. I think they have equal aura. You no, do. That's no, they don't. now you're not just yeah. How can you have the same aura when Jalen Brown has a finals MVP? I would say that Jason Tatum I feel like you either have aura or you don't. Right. Yeah. And Jalen Brown has it and Jason Tatum doesn't. You have negative I think it's a rare thing to have. Yeah, almost as rare as winning finals MVP. I'd say exactly as as rare. Yeah. So when so they both have no aura. 
just be honest with us for a second. It's okay that no, Jason I know. Tatum I'm trying to. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to shit on. Either. I'm not trying to say he has no like. Maybe, yeah, Jalen Brown has a little more aura, but they oh, wow. both have Sounds aura. Like he's trying to drive a wedge. I think Deuce has aura. Deuce had the best night of his life. Deuce yeah. has way more aura than his dad. Yeah, yeah. There is. I mean, it's like yeah, he that kid got to. He was an NBA champion last night. Yeah. No, listen, no one cares. Like Jason Tatum doesn't care that people are are making fun of him online right now. He just won the title. Who cares? It would be funny, but it was it was a crit. It was a little bit of. A he's crit. like refreshing the timeline, seeing all the memes, and he's immediately like put down in the dumps. Yeah, with the trophy, it's like Shit. they're clowning me. They're saying I'm corny. What did we, what did he say when he tried to do the KG? The best he said, "We did it. We did it. We did it." And but they did. Right, he, he I know. looked up the same yeah. way that KG did. Yeah, it looked like he practiced it. When I, I want just an authentic moment there, like he'd just be authentic and be like, "That fucking that was fucking awesome." On the flip side, the picture of him throwing deuce is the most authentic picture. I agree. And that's one of the best pictures that, in sports history. That that had a little aura to it. Right. It was more deuce, but that had aura. But yeah, it, it wasn't the most natural moment. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, okay, there we go. We got that. You don't think texting Kobe and then posting a screenshot, that's not aura? I don't think so. No? You think he texted Kobe? It is cool, though, looking back at the Tatum uh, when he tweeted at LeBron asking for a follow. That's one of my favorites. Yeah. When he uh let me pull it up. And they had Jalen when Jalen Brown, I think it was right after he got drafted or before he yeah. even got drafted, he went to the finals when the Warriors were playing and, and they were following him for like NBA TV or, or some, you know, piece. And he was just like, I'm this is I wanna get here. I'm gonna get here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, they it, did. and like the young Al Horford, the picture, you know, because the crazy Al Horford, thing, I'm very happy. He was on the Celtics with young Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown yeah. and left and somehow the teams let him come back. Right, and he. What happened when he left? He signed a huge contract, got a fat bag, fat bag mm-hmm. from the Philadelphia 76ers. Well, they didn't have any other players that they were going to give that bag to. Yeah, no, I mean it's a great. I mean he's an NBA champion, and oh, except Jimmy college Butler. champion. Yeah, like sure, it, it, it was a good, good, Jimmy. good signing for them. Bad organization, so they didn't work out. But it's just a miracle that he got back, basically for nothing. Which again is Brad Stevens. Yeah, the uh, Jason Tatum tweet to LeBron was when he was 14 years old. He said, "King James, follow back. It's Larry Hughes' nephew from St. Louis and Abe and RJ little cousin and Justin's son. Follow back." <laughs> I love that. I love that. And the Matthew to Chuck. Uh, what did you say? To Chuck. What is it? Chuck. Chuck. Is it spelled? Learn puck. Yeah. He gave him a shout out afterwards. He's like, "Get another one for a kid from St. Louis." Yeah. Well, that video is the best. Yeah. No, it is. It is. Well, and we'll put in. We'll, we'll I love basketball. In a second, yeah, mm-hmm. but yeah, uh, my guy Matthew Tuchuk. So you're okay with <laughs> just the allegations of negative aura? But you also literally just said that the picture of him and Deuce was aura. That's a picture. So it's like, though. That was also because of Deuce. Minus, but, but we said Deuce, Deuce has had aura. the aura. He's aura the explorer. So he's got aura DNA. He's got aura in his DNA. No, it could come That's from the mom. Said. No, it could come from the mom. It's true. It could come from. You the inherit mom. that from mother's side. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know who's got aura is Derek White. Yes. Derek White's uh, got aura. He's the best. Smashing the tooth open. What do you say afterwards? Like, I would give up all my teeth for a championship? I'm pretty sure he was concussed. Nah, yeah. Because he, he did not. He was like deadpan. And I, I, we were talking about it in the gambling cave. It has to suck. I know that it's it, obviously incredible to win a title, but you win a title and you're like, this is going to be the best week of my life. We're going to go party. And in the back of the head, anyone who's ever had tooth pain – he just keeps running his tongue over his broken tooth, being like, God fucking damn it. Yeah. This fucking sucks. Like you've gone all your <laughs> life with a great smile. Yeah. And then you get ready to take the most important picture of your life. Yeah. You're holding up the NBA trophy. He did no teeth. That's then, badass, though. Yeah. 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 It, is, it is cool. And it's a hockey guy move to say, like, yeah, I'll give it my. And those are the pictures that get like hung up in bars forever. Like it's always yeah. like the cool, like bloody or like whatever. Like that's, that's a badass picture. But yeah. that does have to suck, though, deep down where he's just like, God damn it, I wish my teeth weren't broken. That I feel like that's like uh, after the parade because he's gonna have, yeah. have adrenaline. They went to yeah. Miami. They I like they I think Windhorse said they wrote on the uh, whiteboard before the game, flight to Miami at at noon. Oh wow, they had it booked. I like that. That's pretty cool. Happy six one seven day also. Yeah, six one seven day. Pretty impressive. It. And are you guys doing championships every time the cicada, cicadas come out? No, that's way too much time. No, like, for, way too for much the time Celtics. In between. Yeah, I hope not. This nope. is, and it is like the. I feel the, like the last two championships. What, 2008? 16, 16 years, yeah. So, the skaters are 17. But yeah, I don't want to. Hopefully, we don't wait this long. It is. 
again, that that 2008 Celtics team is is when I you know fell in love with the Celtics and really started following them after that. And front runner. <laughs> yeah, I There's mean a, a little bit for sure. Uh, God forbid you root for a team that's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was like, I was 13 years yeah, old. It wasn't not, like I was like Max uh, is Max is really hurt right now. He's in. He's just. Were you just like wa- like a diehard Sixers fan when you were 11? When I yeah, I've, I was of every sport when I. As well, I was a I Celtics fan, but I wasn't. I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I was like watching every game and following it. After that season, I started following it forever and and here on out. So yeah, you and I are just different. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's yeah. hurt. He's a hurt animal. Um, but. It was great that they won one. They're legends forever. It did, you know, it does feel, and, and they say it, that it, you know, they should have won more. They could have won more. So hopefully that doesn't happen again. What did Dave say afterwards? Heroes die. Yeah. Legends Screwed live forever. Up the, <laughs> said he got a little too high from the cigar. <laughs> what happened with Donnie lighting the cigar on the wrong end? That was great. I don't know what he was thinking. I think that's just, just Donnie being Donnie. Did you guys go party? Uh, no. Oh. I, I played pinball here for like an hour and a half. Oh, that's beautiful. Drank some uh, Coors Lights. You also just showed up. Very early today, earlier than usual. No, I go. To, I show at the same time. I go to the gym eight to nine, then I walk in. Yeah, yeah you were here. A early. Pep in it's your okay. step. So much. I mean, it's you it's, have to. It's the best. Yeah, it's getting nice. I steps. didn't sleep. You're watching every highlight. All right, we've done enough of this. Okay. We, are, right. we already did this. Come on. <laughs> you get any nice texts? Yeah. yeah. Uh, who? Anyone congratulate you here? I did not. Jake texted me. Mm-hmm. Big Cat texted me. I think that's it. Wow. I verbally. Congratulate you. The first thing I said when I saw you was what? Yeah, you said congrats. And you did it at halftime yeah. when you left the office. Yeah. Oh yeah, I did it early. So memes and Max did not. Memes and Max did not. Memes was memes was quick to post. You know the third bald co-host head. share. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But the bald head got rave reviews. So yeah, yeah. it does. It it's looks nice. Good. Oh, how about Missoula? By the way, coaching on a, a torn meniscus. I know. I know. Fucking beast. Yeah. We'll ask him. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, okay, let's. We're gonna take. I mean, we could keep going. I, I, we could honestly talk. About no, it. I do. I do have one more stat here. So Peyton Pritchard, yeah, the king of last second shots yep. in the gambling cave. We called it before it happened. Yep. Like put him in. He can close out a quarter like nobody's business. Uh, stat hole. Look this up. He is ten for thirty-seven with less than one second left in a quarter. It's pretty good. He's he's one of the better players of all time. You know who the best is? Pau Gasol. Ooh. Pau Gasol shot 47%. He went 22 for 47 in his career with less than one second left in a quarter. Wow. That's crazy, isn't it? He's Shout out to the king. Clutch. Clutch. Uh, uh, yeah, the slow-mo cams of that are great. Uh, when he just takes like 10 steps. Yeah. Knowing that, in because in, in real time, it doesn't, you're not going to catch that. But when they have the fa- NBA phantom cam, mm-hmm. it's great to see. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we'll talk about the Stanley Cup, and then we're going to do Hot Seat Cool Throw. Okay, PFT, we promised the people that we would update the show uh, before we get to Hot Seat Cool Throw and Joe Missoula with Stanley Cup Final Game 5. And we thought we would be talking about another championship tonight. Instead, they're dragging their ass back to Alberta. That was... We got ourselves a series... That's what they kept on saying. I love that. They're like, don't let it. Don't let us drag you back to Edmonton. Don't let us do it. We're gonna drag you all the way back. And yeah. Connor McDavid was fucking unreal. That goal. I think it was the third goal, fourth goal, maybe, where he just diced up the entire uh, Panthers defense and then dished it at the last second to Corey Perry. I'm starting to think this guy could win the big one. So Connor McDavid should just do that every single time. If he's capable of doing that, just do that more. And I think that's the key to the game. Not to get all technical and in the weeds when it comes to hockey strategy, but just have Connor McDavid go one on four and then make a sick pass at the end. And that's pretty much unstoppable. I don't care. I don't care who Bob thinks he is, uh, but you're not stopping that guy. It was awesome. Yeah. It was good hockey. Second period, period of the week. Yep. Easy. And Second actually, awesome. even. Even the even the end when when the goalie gets pulled and you're like, okay, game's over. The Panthers survived like multiple times where I thought there was gonna be an empty netter and kept you on the edge of their your seat. And it was just a great, great hockey game. The NHL is gonna have to step up where the NBA failed us in maybe delivering us a classic final. If this one goes seven, whoo. I mean, 
It was just great hockey. Great fucking I'm, hockey. I'm, I'm putting this on the nation of Canada. Our hat, our neighbors to the north, uh, Canada. Do the right thing. Give us seven games. This yes. is a legacy series for Canada. Need to need to just buy some time before we get into dog days. If the hockey is going to be this good, I want more of it. I want, I I want two more games. I agree. I agree. Um, what did Connor McDavid? He had. Uh, yeah. What do you have? I think two goals. Two, and two goals two and two assists. Yeah, he was crazy. Incredible. Game. And, uh, the the save that Kachuk made at the end is going to not be talked about. Maybe you know what? I actually think that. Now that I'm saying it, uh, just people will say it. nobody's going to talk about the Kachuk save. A lot of people yeah. are going to talk about that part of it. But it was awesome, hustling at the end, and he should have knocked the net off its moorings. That yeah. would have been a smart play, a heads-up play. But, yeah, it was uh, it was great hockey. The cats are getting dragged back. I saw a lot of gifts of cats just getting dragged across rooms. Kind of concerning that it's so easy to find a gif of a cat getting dragged, but here we are on the internet. Um, but, yeah, let's let's go hockey. Give us more. Yeah. Great hockey, great fucking hockey, and we got a game six dragging all the way back to Edmonton on Friday night. Uh, before we do hot seat, cool throwing back to ourselves, Hank, I know that we talked about Aura. Have you seen the yes. video that is now circulating? No. Oh, can I send it to you and get a live reaction? Max, I'm sure yeah. you have seen this. No? I, the video I circulating. also have Online. Like this, I can just I feel a reach. I have no, it's not a reach at all. It's not a reach at all. It's uh just a mashup. It's a fun mashup. And I want you to watch it. And everything I said stands that like Tatum shouldn't have to apologize to any. He's a he fucking he's a champion. Who cares if he's getting made fun of online? But I saw it and I had to bring it up. I sent it to everyone. Why don't you narrate it? Uh Max, why don't you narrate it when you're watching it? This is after what we talked. We talked about all of this. I know though. we did, but this is the new mashup that I didn't realize mm-hmm. is all of it. What are they going to say now? Like Steph Curry is not the only person that said that. There's no like it's a it's a video of Jason Tatum saying what they're going to say now, and then Steph Curry saying it. I would have to imagine that's said in like a majority of championship locker rooms after a win. No, but it's a little bit tougher after he's already done it two other times in the same night with other people the kg one he didn't say anything is possible he did he did. he said we did same, it he was trying to do yeah his body language his, his, that's, his, that's people's <laughs> interpretation. the exact <laughs> same like art is interpretation you're interpreting that way like that's he didn't copy kevin garnett if you're saying that steph curry has trademarked the phrase what they gonna say now that's crazy the kanye one that's that was word for word. He did it on stage in the same way. That was an imitation. That what was, was. What was there? Was there another one in there? No, this, it's is, a, it, this is a good video. This is a very interesting video, and it's from Hater Report. I'm going to have to give Hater Report a follow. <laughs> it sounds like they're doing good things there. Uh, we got, it's pictures of him hugging the trophy, and then a picture of MJ and Kobe hugging the trophy. Every fucking player. I agree with that MJ part. That Kobe. part was a reach. That Hugs part was a reach. That part was a reach. I completely did you notice agree. how you know what he hey, did what about, right what after about, he what won? they gonna say now? What, what they're gonna say now? Hank, you know what he did right after they won? He sprayed champagne. Yeah. Oh no, what? Yeah. yeah. Just like just I can think of a couple guys that have done that. He sprayed LeBron, champagne. Michael Jordan. Yeah, I mean it's it, 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 it's probably a reach. I'm just uh I just it was going viral on Twitter, so I thought we would talk about it but that's fine yeah no it's fair i, I do I, like the cat i don't think tatum should apologize for anything i'm on your side hank i'm just pointing this out are I'm you saying that what they're this? gonna say now is is steph i i can't get over that one like that one I is think steph curry has a reach. trademark i can't even like what they're gonna the say now have tonight, you heard it like, what they're gonna say now all right let's you know what google will decide what they see what the Google trend on that is. Yeah. There's probably now. a book written about it about like the fucking first nineteenth first hit is Steph Curry. Wait, Hank. I'm, I'm seeing Jason Tatum. Hank, what what were you gonna say? There's probably a book written about it. Yeah, about like the fucking St. John's Chicago men's basketball team from nineteen ninety or something. Like what they're gonna say now, St. John's Chicago. Yeah, nineteen ninety. But the fact that there's so many people that have titled like videos, what they're gonna say now, Steph Curry. What they're gonna say now, like, Shaquille Holloway, head coach. 
What did he Where say? Where are you seeing that? What did they say now? Oh, Angel Reese said what they're going to say now. Huh. Steph Curry, what they're going to say now. He did do a tweet, too. Uh, he's, he's, he's a lot of the top. Soul Retriever on Instagram. What are they going to say now with a video of his shoes? 57 likes, two comments. It sounds like it's pretty. Sammy Hager. What they going to say now? 1987. Wait, Sammy oh. Hagar? Does it? Yeah. Hager. Sang, sang for Van Halen? Yeah. Will's Alatoris in 2022 when he made the final putt. What are they going to so say yeah, now? Like, that one is, it, that's such a, that's a beyond reach. And he didn't copy KG. They're just like interpreting that video that way, but he didn't say the same words. Ron Suno and Zay Muna. What they going to say? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're debunking this. Yeah. This is good. We've debunked. Yeah, I agree. Still bad aura. <laughs> that's. I, I can't mean, wait for. I can't wait for the to their parade. It, it, it really just shows the true salt and you know, denial that that the haters are in. And, and no, but it's it, good. It, like this is an ongoing narrative. Now we can we can take every word that he says in public and then cross reference it to to see if it's plagiarized. I like that. Ooh, uh, friends, nineteen ninety four, season six, episode three. You're gonna say things now, aren't you? <laughs> that's basically the same thing right yeah okay last two things before we get to uh hot seat cool throne r.i.p willie mays incredible life incredible baseball player one of the most iconic catches of all time he i mean i is he he's on the mount rushmore baseball players right yeah he's in the goat he's in the goat category yeah he, a lot of people if you're like above the age of 50 you think that Willie Mays is the best baseball player to ever live. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. The say, Hey kid. Great. Yeah. Nickname. And that, that catch the, uh, over the shoulder catch. Every time I watch it, I'm always amazed that they actually played baseball on that field. Yeah. The polo grounds like 500 feet to straightaway center. It was a rectangle. Yeah. He's uh all time, all time legend. Uh, 93 hell of a life. That's a hell of a life. Oh, we we all would be lucky to live to ninety three, but uh, how is it? What is the say hey kid from? I gotta find. Uh, I think there was a song that they wrote about him called "Say Hey." Let's give his famous moniker, moniker "Say Hey Kid." Uh, quit costing the ball club money with long distance phone calls and join the team. It was also around the time that Mays is given his famous moniker "The Say Hey Kid." He, uh, yeah, oh, one of the greatest of all time. So R.I.P. Willie Mason. Then what happened with Aaron Judge? Yeah, he, uh, he got hit by a pitch and he got X-rays. So they were saying that maybe they threw at Aaron Judge intentionally. That might have just been Jason LaCanfora, the old Washington Post guy, that was saying like, "Good, I'm glad they threw at him because because uh, Soho ran into the third baseman on the Orioles and I guess knocked him out of the game with a hip injury." And so uh, some people were saying that maybe they went inside on Judge as retaliation yeah. for Soto. I don't know if that's the case. I don't think that's the case, but I think the x-ray you said, Jake, was negative, right? X-rays and uh, scans have been negative. Oh, I found the Say Hey Kid. Uh, Mays received $6,000 for signing with the Giants after graduating high school in 1950. New York Journal American sports writer Barney Kremenko said that in Mays' rookie season, the reticent Mays would blurt, say who, say what, say where, say hey, what are they going to say now? <laughs> in my paper i tabbed him to say hey kid it's stuck that's great i might added the wild. last one <laughs> when yeah. i interned at mlb network the cafeteria was the say hey cafe oh mm. i yeah. mean nothing, nothing is great, better than getting a cafeteria <laughs> named after I mean, you. <laughs> don't act like you wouldn't be flattered by that big oh, cat duh better than an airport yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely the cafeteria is not bad people are happy in a cafeteria yeah but i would much rather a cafeteria than a airport or a highway those would yeah. suck i think yeah. my dream is a horse horse would be good horse would no. be, good. be great to say hey horse what if it loses yeah true hank yeah, had a horse named passed. after him and it <laughs> sucked it was, of all it was li- it's, he's just <laughs> finishing his race right now at saratoga that's how <laughs> slow he was and that was uh, he raced 10 years ago um okay let's kick it to ourselves hot seat cool throne 
Okay, let's do Hot Seat Cool Throne. Hot Seat Cool Throne presented by Coors Light. You don't have to be selling out stadiums to feel like you're chilling backstage. You just need Coors Light. Coors Light wants to make your summer more chill with limited edition backstage six packs curated by some of your favorite artists because music plus Coors Light equals chill amplified. Coors Light is the only choice when you're ready to choose chill. Coors Light is cold lagered, cold filtered, and cold packaged for a smoother finish. Uh, Hank, you want to crack open a Coors Light? Yeah. Celebration Coors Light. Come on, when you what, what's the what's the playlist when when you win a win a title, Hank? With your Coors Light. Come on. Uh, when I was driving home last night, because I saw a clip uh, before I left of, of them playing "March Madness" by Future, so I I was listening to "March Madness" by Future, "Trophies" by Drake, and then you know what I listened to on this morning. What? Back to back. Oh wow. Okay. So wait, crack it open in the. There oh, there it is. Amplify your chill this summer with Coors Light. Choose chill. Choose Coors Light. Visit CoorsLight.com slash summer music to see how Coors Light can amplify your summer. And be sure to keep an eye out on Coors Light social handles and Coors Light backstage sixpack.com all summer long for the drops. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. CoorsLight.com slash, uh, sorry, Coors Light backstage sixpack.com all summer long for the drops. All right, Hank, your hot seat, cool throw. Uh, my hot seat are the haters. Oh, okay. The, Any in this room? Not in this room. Any in the other room? No, that not them. They're not. They're not. They're not in the hot seat. They they know where they're at. Um, but the Oilers girl, yeah, came online and just made a video, just saying she's sick of the haters and, and to fuck off, basically. Oilers girl, actually, my name's Kate, but uh, <laughs> here we are. So I've thought long and hard about what I wanted to say to everybody. Anybody who knows me knows that I'm. At one of my favorite places right now. Uh, come here to do some thinking, we'll call it. But I just wanted to say, you could be the most perfect, godly fucking person in the world. You could save kittens from a river if they were drowning. Someone's still gonna hate you. So you know what? At the end of the day, I got drunk and whipped my tits out at an Oilers game and they went viral. Fuck you if you don't like it. Woo! Go Oilers! She makes a lot Queen. of good points. I was just waiting for her to show her too. <laughs> like that would have been a great mic drop. I think I think she is uh wise beyond her years. Mm hmm Yeah. Agreed. You could save burning kittens from a river and they would find something wrong with you. Yep. The internet sucks. If we can't just get behind a nice pair of tits, what are we doing? Uh and your cool throne, Hank? Cool throne? Uh my cool throne is oh. these great shirts. All right, now I regret loot doing yeah, all that glazing. Okay, there. Lucky, Q and the Duck Boats. Duck Boats, City of Champions, Max, we can get one of these for you. Plug God. Yep. I I do. Barstoolsports.com. I love, but I hate at the same time, the uh, Title Town shirt that has all the banners on there. It's just, it's obnoxious. But I love it for you. 18 years. Look at that. Nothing but su success. Nothing mm -hmm. but success. Nothing but success. For Jalen Brown, you're right. Yeah. Even in the aura department. They have aura. <laughs> they? <laughs> they? No. Yeah, weird. No, no, I never claimed Jalen Brown didn't have aura. He's got fucking aura coming out of his ears. Two people can't share the aura. No? No. no. Which one of you guys has There's the only aura. one aura. Which one of you guys has aura? Hank has aura. Hank has aura. Hank, Hank, you have the aura. In, on this podcast, you have the aura. Championship DNA. Yeah. You have positive aura. <laughs> All right, PFT, your hot seat, Cool Throne? Uh, my hot seat is Les Miles. Mm. Les Miles because he is uh, he's suing LSU because they vacated his wins. They vacated some of his wins as a coach. And gave him to Coach K? Uh, they did not do that. But the reason why he's suing them is actually kind of interesting. So to get into the College Football Hall of Fame, you have to have, I believe, a 60% winning percentage. Right? Yeah. And I'm, he, I'm just looking at Hank because we're not talking about the Celtics, so he just went right to texting just, probably just in like the totally parades coming out. up. Yeah. Okay, keep going. Sorry. All right. So it's very rude of you, Hank. So Les Wait, Miles. We, 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 we're going to do five minutes not on I was scheduling. Something. Sorry. Okay. What were you scheduling? A meeting. Oh. What? Always grinding. About the production plan for the intern interviews. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. So Les Miles had his wins vacated by L Hank. I'm up here. <laughs> his wins were vacated by LSU. He had a 65 percent winning. Can't tell where you're looking. I'm talking. Oh, oh man. I'm talking, Hank. We're getting spicy. Hey, Max, cut Hank's mic off. 
Thank you. We're getting spicy. All right. So I promise this is interesting. Okay, I'm so, listening. So he had like a 65% career winning percentage. To get into the College Football Hall of Fame as a coach, you have to have a 60% winning percentage. The wins that were vacated by LSU drops it down to 59.7%. Uh, so Les Miles can no longer get into the Hall of Fame yes. because LSU vacated his wins. Oh. So he's suing LSU to try to get back. I don't know if LSU should, should give in to him, but what I think LSU should do Find something that happened when Nick Saban was there. Because mm -hmm. Nick Saban is up for eligibility next year. And if they took away his wins at LSU, that might drop below. No chance. You don't think so? B below what? Total? Of what? Because I think. Total the, what? Wait, do the, do the losses remain? Yeah, but no, but even if the if, if they took away all the wins, but you're saying percentage. If the if the losses remained, but the wins and were And what's vacated, the percentage? You have to be 60? 60, yeah. PFT. If they kept they the kept losses. PFT, do you, do you know Alabama's record? Yeah, I know Alabama's record. I don't think you do. Yeah, they were really fucking When they good. go 12 and 1 every year, that's. It was a great It doesn't matter. It was a great idea that I had. <laughs> that's. We got to. Like, what was his record while he was at LSU? That was, fun. That was good. <laughs> talking, that was. That, uh, I was with you, PFT, until you said if we eliminate Nick Saban's LSU. Because if, if you want to be a real hater, you could do that to a coach that left you and then came and coached for your rival. I understand, but Nick Saban's. Wait, wait, Hank, well, your mic's not on. You're not mic's not on. To put no, it, no, put it no, 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 okay, no. Okay, double okay, mute. Okay. <laughs> How many wins did Nick Saban have at LSU? Let's find that. Oh, he was only there for five years. Yeah, yep, you're right. Okay, and, you're right. And you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. I'm wrong. You're right. I'm wrong. You're right. Nick Saban's uh, he was 48 and 16. Nick Saban's win percentage rate is 80. percent Yeah, it's, he's very far. 92 and 71. <laughs> yeah. So he could end the tie. Well, in theory, what if Michigan State finds something and LSU finds something? Nick Saban. We, <laughs> Hank, oh no, Hank. Go ahead, Hank. Check, check, check. Hank, go ahead. Check, check, Put check. Put Hank back on. What if PFT, they can add his NFL losses? Well, he's only like one season. Yeah. What? Wh All right. I'm sorry. I'm trying to help you out. My bad. No, it was a dumb idea. I had a dumb idea. I'm sorry. This show's built on dumb ideas. That's true. I, if you took away a hundred and if you took away a hundred and forty of his losses, I think he'd still be in the Hall of Fame. He could lose like almost all his losses. That's correct. I mean, all his wins. All his wins. All his yeah. wins. Yeah. I, okay. L let me save this for you. I think LSU should should acquiesce to less miles. Let me save this for you. The rule that you have to have sixty percent to make the College Football Hall of Fame is bullshit and should be changed because I did see this last week. Mike Leach is like .03% away. Okay. They need to let Mike Leach in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, because who's to say that you weren't a giant contributor to the game if you didn't happen to have you Right. 60 it's crazy. More. And he was that close, and he obviously tragically passed when he was going to still coach more. That's mm -hmm. crazy. Mm -hmm. So let Mike Leach in. Let Mike Leach in, and then probably let Les Miles in. Yeah. And also, but just to be And haters, also figure out how Saban can... Also, yeah. just to be haters, they should vacate all of Nick Saban's wins so it looks worse on him. Yeah, if you're if you're real about the rivalry, yeah, you would find a way to do that. I I'm I'm doing the math right now. I think it would be, um, yeah. They so if they vacated a hundred and eighty two oh of Nick Saban's wins, what'd you do, Hank? Did he spill? There's this is something very bad. Breaking news is coming. Oh no. All right, breaking news and Max thinks this is bad. He just said, oh, God. Oh, no. The Celtics are not beating Luka. I like how Max got second billing to the Corgi that knocks basketball stuff. Yeah. He could, we couldn't even get a clip. Oh, that must double stink for Max because he hates dogs, too. Oh, no, I think no, that's an honor, Max. Max. I think you can spin yeah. that as being like, whoa. This they value my opinion. But I mean, I, it's just, it just it just further cements me as like such a fucking loser. But the problem is, I'm, a, I'm just a historic <laughs> historic loser. Here's the problem, Max, for you here. Uh, the picking Dallas is like that's you have to pick the series. Some people pick Dallas. Some people pick the Celtics. I never think it's like, oh, gotcha. You picked the wrong side. That's what we do. But typing out the Celtics are not beating Luca. All, that was also a game where I bet the Timber. It was the game that the 
so the Mavs beat the Timberwolves, and I bet the Timberwolves big, and I was so pissed off. I was like, Luka is so fucking good. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to spin this into – The Celtics are not The Celtics are Luka. not beating Luka. And I, that, was, that was very incorrect. Damn. Damn. I'm sorry that happened to you. Mm. Max. Also, one thing we didn't talk about. That got too. me scared for a second. Oh, that got, yeah, no, that was. That I was, was like, I thought crazy. someone died. Yeah. It's just our boy Max falling on his face yet again. This could be bad. It's a, you really could have just been like, we need to make someone needs to remake that uh, the the video of the guy just fumbling all the Tupperware and everything. It just that's Max. We should just do that video. We yeah. Just put a bunch of shit in Max's hands. It's and just have to make that. Oh, first. Max pooped his pants again. Yeah. That's not really breaking moves. As you know, the sun comes up. Max yeah, does something that makes him day. be a loser. The sun goes down. Mm -hmm. There's no breaking moves in that. Hank's talking about like the can't win the big one. When I win the big one, that'll be <laughs> that'll be a big move. <laughs> oh, what are you gonna do? It'll never happen. <laughs> I actually kind of want to see it. No, no, no. What no, are you gonna no. do, but you're, Max? You're the producer of the show. It is cool that like a, a team that just won the NBA championship are, are listeners and fans of yours, right? No, I mean it's just. That's a cool thing. That's a really that's cool really thing. That's really cool. That's what I said. Big Cat's always said, if you're going to be wrong, be really, yeah. really yeah. wrong. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good yeah. point. That's a good point. At least I'm known for being very wrong and very much a loser with every sport that I root for. Right. You got aura. Yeah. I, lo I have losing aura. <laughs> heavy. I have heavy losing you got, you aura. You got Laura, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, where, where were we? Uh, I was being very, very wrong about something. What was You're it? Less Miles hot seat. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah if, if they took away 182 of Nick Saban's wins, uh -huh. he would still have over 60%. Okay, well, that's probably not going to happen. But, but I maybe, tried. But maybe. But I tried. Uh, the other hot seat is Justin Timberlake. Yeah. Oh. Got a DUI in the Hamptons. Uh-oh. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Pretty bad stuff. They, a picture came out of him in handcuffs being let out of the police station and then a bunch of old clips of him saying like don't drink and drive came out Ooh, uh, old takes exposed on that one and then he also uh he was complaining about britney and telling her she needs to stop drinking oh all those resurfaced too oh so it's tough it's tough for old jt don't drink and drive i also there's like no aren't there no roads there's like one road in the hamptons can't he just get he should get a cab he should have a yeah. driver. You can get an Uber. He you should get a, have driver. a driver. I don't know why rich people don't have drivers. Yeah. And I don't know why you don't call an Uber. This is viral marketing for Summer House, which, by the way, is an excellent show. I don't know if you've seen that. Uh, I haven't. It's seen terrible. It. It's actually the worst show I've ever seen, but it's it's so bad that it's good. Okay. Uh, I'll check it out. Yeah. So Justin Timberlake, hot seat. And then my cool throne is Notes apps. Mm. Because oh, yeah, I had this as well. Big day for Notes apps. Big yeah. day. Rory McElroy gave uh, maybe the most important notes app that we've all been waiting for. Everyone was like, he's going to apologize. He has to apologize. He gave a notes app apology without actually apologizing for anything. For the wheels spinning? For the wheels. He did not apologize for the wheels spinning. He, what? He said, firstly, I'd like to congratulate Bryson. Uh, yesterday was a tough day, probably the toughest I've had in my nearly 17 years as a professional golfer. Bryson is a worthy champion and exactly what professional golf needs right now. I think we can all agree on that. Then he gets to, as I reflect on my week, I will rue a few things over the course of the tournament, mostly the two missed putts on 16 and 18 in the final day. But as I always do, I'll look back at the positives that far outweigh the negatives. And then he goes on, doesn't apologize, though. Doesn't apologize for oh. not talking to the media. Doesn't apologize for almost hitting several spectators in the parking lot. Doesn't apologize for getting on a plane before Bryson got the championship trophy. Uh, so it's a no type apology with no apology from Rory. Damn. Still. You know it's serious when he's in dark mode. I would have liked to see an apology about the wheels spinning specifically. Yeah, the, in the in the tournament issue Lexus. I feel like the dark mode was an intentional choice on his part to convey seriousness. Yeah. If you just go normal daytime mode, that's more of a jovial notes app. Um, but yeah, he was trying to convey being apologetic without apologizing. Yeah. So he might need to do a notes app for the notes app, and say. I apologize for not apologizing. Yeah. Which would still not be an apology. Wouldn't be an apology. For the original thing. Correct. We need a triple apology. We've all played golf in the last couple of days. I feel like he well, uh, well, hold is on. not Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. PFT and I got up at 7 in the morning to play nine holes with Frankie. Oh, no, but get. I, well, no, I, I, I woke at 5.30. Yeah, this yeah, is I as well. Five, PFT and I got up at 5.30 in the morning. I got up at 5.30 on Monday after we point. did the show late. PFT got up at 5.30 after the NBA Finals on Tuesday to, to mm -hmm. 
uh, do uh, nine holes with our good friend Frankie Borelli coming out soon. Which I'm happy to do. Hank, you golfed for all of Monday. I was here Monday. We streamed last night. I was here for all of I Monday. I was the last day. person in this work building day. last work night. Day. What time were you here till last night, Big Cat? What time did you get to golf? What time did you wake up to go golf? And did you six thirty? You only played nine holes. No, I played eighteen. Uh, we were participating we in the played, classic. I played too. I'm not. So was that escape was that one. for content? Yeah, I posted we, content. We I posted quite a video. literally were entertaining clients. Oh, I posted a video. Everyone made fun of me. How'd you play? I played. Not great. Jake okay, carried so us. Nice trying lumping Regardless, us all in together. The no, life, see, that's no where deal. it's like inconsequential because all I was saying, and because you guys also maybe felt this, is if I was Rory, I don't think I would golf for like a month. Like looking at a putt that's shorter than four feet is actual PTSD for him. Well, he's yes. not. He said in the notes yeah. app he's taking off until they go to Europe. For, Shout out uh, Smiley for calling that. Scottish he's like, he's, not, he's yeah. going to pull out. Mm -hmm. By the way. Like, did you guys have a putt where you're like, I can't, if I was Rory, like I would, I would be yeah, Hank. Like, yeah, I don't think I, I don't think a putt exists on planet Earth that you could miss and then take three months off from golfing afterwards. If I lost the U.S. Open because of two three footers, I my hand up, I would take three months off. Wow. Um, by the way, we've been doing this show for so long. Did you know this, Hank? Uh, I fucked up on Sunday night. We had Smiley Kaufman on. Great interview. We've had him on before. I told you that. I forgot. Yeah. I forgot. Yeah. It was like 2018, maybe? 17. 17? Well, earlier than that, yeah. Yeah, 17. So that's my fuck. He's going to be on again. Him and Ricky. Ricky Ricky gets no respect as one of the better interviews we had early on in this podcast. Yeah, mm -hmm. he was great. Um, all right, my hot seat is Landon Donovan. Mm. Landon yeah. Donovan's hair uh, at the Euros. Holy shit. So I think he got a hair transplant, mm -hmm. and it didn't take. Well, I think, I think it's, it's a in recent, the process. It's yeah. a recent one, yeah. So it looks like his shoulders are eating the back of his head, and he was told before he did it that he would not have that part of his head on TV. Ugh. But then he turned to the side, and immediately everybody was like, holy shit, what is wrong with Landon Donovan? I, 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 it's so bad. This is how bad, if you miss the picture, you can go look it up, but I'll explain it to you if you're listening and not watching. It is so bad. That I posted it, and then about an hour later, I went back to it and said to myself, wait, did he just have like brain surgery for a tumor or something? Did I fuck mm -hmm. up? Because that's how bad his hair looks. Yeah, just wear a hat, Landon. It's, uh, it's, it's the reverse mullet. It's, it's horrendous. It looks like he, he went through like a medical emergency. It looks like he had said that he would shave his head if the Mavericks won the NBA Finals, and then after they won that game, he's like, okay, let's do this in steps. Yeah, I don't know how you come back from that. Hopefully he, hopefully with a full head of hair. That would rock. But now you, everyone yeah. knows, too. But still, I, I mean, in this day and age. Yeah. Just wear a toupee. I don't understand what happened to toupees. Toupees and just daring people to say, oh, you're wearing a toupee, would be so much fun. Just rocking a terrible toupee. If you're open about the toupee. Right. Yeah, if you're open. If I ever it. have male pattern baldness, I will rock a toupee, and it will be horrendous. And I dare you to say something. Yeah, it's a, it's a really, really bad... If you are you know you're going to be on TV, just deal with one more week of, right. of having the shitty hair. Right, or just shave your head and do schedule... You knew the Euros were coming. Yeah. Schedule your hair transplant after. Yeah. Uh, all right, my cool throne is our guy, J.O.C., he released a great video. Can you play it for us, Max? Uh, congratulating Hank on his uh, big win. He also was, I think, about to drown in the ocean uh, when he posted this. But this is a congrats, Hank, video from Jerry O'Connell. Hanky, look who's back, Mr. Bing Bong. Congrats on your Celtics. Thanks. Worst finals ever, sleepy finals. <laughs> sleepy Hank, Bing Bong. Time to get back outside. In the waves, in the sun, with the birds, I'm a birder, just like your high school science teacher, bing bong, tweet tweet. Speaking of birds, Tiffany Gomez is flying the bird, she's a pilot. You could have been a co-pilot, but you blew it! You blew it! Even Belichick's got a girlfriend, because of homework, bing bong, your backswing sucks! That, Wipe out!
<laughs> your back swing sucks. <laughs> that felt unnecessary. That was the, whole, that was the only Belichick, part of that where I was like, what the what the hell, Jerry? Even uh, Belichick has a girlfriend is so good. So Jerry went to the beach to to get away from his wife so she wouldn't know that he was recording this video. Yes. That's what I love about this. Yeah. No, I, I think he was at the beach. He went in the water to get away from her. From a supermodel wife. <laughs> yes. He, they probably were... Uh, 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 at the beach as a family, and he's like, "I gotta, I'm gonna go in the water real quick just to do this video." <laughs> Scream at my phone for 15 seconds. Here. Oh, he's the best. We need a we need a Celtics Knicks series next year. Just fly him in for the whole thing. Be great. Yeah, it's it's so funny to think about Jerry. Like he's a real person who has a real job, like on TV, and just half his day is like. What is Tiffany Gomez saying? And what? Are, what's? Let me listen to PMT. <laughs> so I love him. But his show's on CBS. Right? Yeah, it's on national television. Yeah, his he show's so funny too. Yeah, so funny. All right, Jake, finish off Hot Seat Cool Throne. Uh, my Hot Seat Sorry PFT is Alex Ovechkin. No, uh, he oh, looks good. No. Yeah. So there's he a picture great. going around of Ov playing. Uh, the sport called Padel, which is going to be this future game that I take on. You guys make fun of me for playing. It's basically a mix of Paddle. Tennis. Paddle. It's paddle. I've heard it's padel. It, Jake is right. It's padel. There's it's padel, padel and there's yeah. paddle. Padel? Wait, yeah. There's a difference there's a between difference? padel and paddle? I think so, yeah. No. No, this is the one is, with, no, it's the same sport. Same sport. Oh. No, this I, is the one with the glass walls. Not oh. chain, Yeah, not chain walls. I played the sport. and it, With uh, the glass walls? It was, padel? It was a chain. It was like a really tightly wound chain that it would bounce off of. Padel is a doubles game only in which it, yeah. Oh, that's a really mean tweet. It says breaking Alex Ovechkin is expected to replace Joey Chestnut in this year's hot dog eating contest. He looks like he anyways. Might, uh, people are roasting him for looking big. Is there a chance that maybe he just didn't take off his pads after the last game? There is a chance that that happened. There's also a chance that he's trying to get out of shape so he doesn't get drafted by Putin. Yep, trying to stay out of Ukraine. Yeah. I respect that. He does look large. He looks powerful. That's that's a man that is uh, that's old man strength. So for the and that was taken before they started playing. I don't know. I don't know. What I, I, I would say after all, all okay. four of them look pretty sweaty. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Um, and my cool throne, I think the first time this is ever on the cool throne, the New York Mets. Yes. Their season might have been saved by a hero no one saw coming, and it's Grimace, the McDonald's mascot. He threw out the first pitch last week. Since then, they're 6 and 0, and they are dominating yes. on the field. Mm -hmm. The picture of Grimace is awesome. Grimace. It was a decent first pitch for, uh, for a mascot. Yeah. It was, uh, we did the, I should have seen this coming, but I had to do the rundown today because the Celtics won. So Dave texted Kevin and I, uh, rundown at 11, like first thing this morning and the rundown ended and Kevin and I were just talking about how the Cubs suck. And he's like, well, at least I have grimace. And it was maybe the saddest conversation that's ever yeah. happened. I mean, the Mets are only a game out of I, the wild card. Okay. I have a take real quick. The Major League Baseball completely fucked up the playoffs with this wild card. It's now so everyone's alive stupid. Unless you stink. The Cubs are a bad baseball team. And they're two games out. And they're two games out. They're in last place in the NL Central. And they're two games out. You shouldn't... There should not be a playoff spot for, like, you have to be... There has to be a, a limit. There has to be well, a... You to have be fair, to hit. if they didn't add the third, they would only be three behind the Cardinals for the second wild card. It's just crazy. I don't know. They're just not a good team. And I look and I'm like, oh, well, you can delude yourself. I, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't like that they did this in the NBA either. It's my biggest gripe about the play-in that you let owners get off on basically saying, well, we're putting together a playoff team when no, if you're a play-in team, you're not a, like... It's just bullshit. I think that there should be a rule where if you're beneath 500, you shouldn't yes. even be listed in the wild card possibilities. But it, you could just – owners get to, to to sell their fan base on being competitive when they're not competitive. Well, here's the thing, though. In baseball, if you get into the playoffs, you do have a chance to win. Anything could happen. Yeah. Anything could happen. Uh, okay. Let's get to our interview with Joe Missoula. We're going to get to Joe Missoula in a second. He's brought to you by Proper 12. Here's a proper pick. Proper 12 Irish Apple. A delicious blend of Proper's award-winning Irish whiskey with crisp, fresh notes of Irish apple. It's perfect neat or with a little ginger ale. There's no better springtime sip. Pour the roar with Proper 12. Pick up a bottle. Try it for yourself. Original, rich, and smooth Proper 12 Irish whiskey. Or try crisp and fresh Irish apple, smooth to the core. And now, here's Coach Missoula. Okay, we now welcome on a very, very, very special guest. Less than 24 hours after becoming a world champion, it is Boston Celtics head coach Joe Missoula. Coach, oh, Hank's clapping for you. Hank's clapping for you in the room. 
Coach, hey, Pat, hey. Uh, let's start. I mean, just how, how are you feeling right now? I know that's the lamest question, but I, I, I have to imagine it's just the, the best feeling in the absolute world. Yeah, no, I definitely expected more from you for the first question. Of our- <laughs> um, you know, I just uh, really like gratitude. I mean, that's a lame answer, but for me, it's uh hasn't really set in yet, I think, because everything just happened so fast and you got to go to a bunch of stuff. But I would say the first word is just, you know, being grateful. Uh, you know, never thought I would ever be in this position. And uh, just great, like the type of players that we get to coach every day, the type of people we get to be around. It's just an awesome experience. Yeah, I would imagine. How is the knee feeling? Because I didn't know this. I don't know if it was public or not. I didn't realize you were coaching on a torn meniscus. How is it feeling, number one? And then number two, how did having a torn meniscus uh, impact your coaching at all? Well, listen, that's what happens when you lose games in the regular season. Like you're just not allowed to lose. So uh, after we lost to Atlanta at home, I went out, went on the mats, punished myself and just just pounded my body until it couldn't take anymore and ended up just tearing my knee. So ended up being a great experience for me. I had to do like six hours of uh, treatment in order to, to coach the next game without too much of a limp because I could not walk. Um, but I tell you what, it almost, it was one of the best things that happened to me for the rest of the season. Cause it put me in like this fight or flight mentality to where like, I could just not relax. Like I had to constantly train to keep it pain free, had to constantly get, uh, you know, physical therapy, uh, my physical therapist has been great. And, um, it was just, it was awesome. I've been thinking about maybe getting hurt every like all-star break. <laughs> wait, fucking wait, wait, wait I love so it. hold on a second. So, so you could make the argument then. The fact that you guys only lost three games in the entire playoffs, that that saved your life. Because if you had gone to, like, a seven-game series, you would have had to go to the mat after all of those times. Like, you you could have died. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think the injury the injury probably did save my life because I was getting out of control. I was getting carried away. So, uh, yeah. it's I mean, you, friend, your intensity was, is insane. It, it was cool, though. Like, it just brought a different level of focus that I had to have because like, it's like, it's a, like a bucket handle tear and like it would lock and like click from time to time. So like I had to walk slower. I couldn't move certain ways. So it really forced me to focus more. And so it was actually, I'm really grateful that it happened. So, uh, so that definitely, I, it, I, I, I missed the mats though. Yeah. It impacted your shot blocking ability then, right? You're, you're not able to go out on the court and swat anything away. Yeah, I've, I've always been a two foot block or jumper, not a one foot jumper. And so I need, you know, that power from both of my my quads to kind of, you know, explode out. And so now that I can only jump off my left, I wasn't able to elevate the way I needed to 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 get those those deflections and blocks. Yeah. So it's good to see you smiling. I saw uh, a Twitter thread last night of all the guys taking pictures with the Larry O'Brien trophy. And the two pictures I saw of you, you were just not smiling. What was, what was that? Is it like jobs not finished? <laughs> I was really pissed because I feel like all the other like teams have gotten a head start on getting better for next season. And like, you know, it's <laughs> the middle of June and, and we're still focused on last season. So I had to get over that for a second, but once I was able to enjoy it, it was a great moment. Um, that thing's heavy, man. Yeah, I think it's heavy. Yeah, we're we're Especially talking at, with the torn meniscus. Yeah, we we're talking <laughs> to Hank earlier about the uh, the banner situation. How you guys have a, a blank banner for the next one that hangs up. When you guys yeah. do the the banner ceremony, are you just going to unveil a brand new blank banner for next year? We should. I mean, we should never. We should act like it just didn't happen. Just don't even put anything up. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's got to be a great feeling. So walk us through what happened after the game. What what do you do the night after winning an NBA championship? This is like a, a lifelong accomplishment. Did you take time to celebrate, or were you just busy with other other commitments till now? Um. So what happened? So the horn goes off. You obviously they they gather everybody around and, and find my wife and kids and like spend that time with them. And both my my kids got to go on stage, and it was awesome to see them. I got a couple of pictures of like their reactions. And then uh, you go in the back and then like the locker room turns into like a college 21, like an 18 and over nightclub. Um, it's, I was like, I felt like I was back in college again. So that was that was cool. I had to shower because I was drenched and then I had to go to some media stuff. And then uh, you go to a, like an after party type thing, which we hung around. And then my wife and I stuck around and kind of just walked around the garden to just take in uh, the confetti on the floor, uh, visualizing the new banner being up. Uh, visualizing the old banner. Um, there was like this blank, there's this blank place in the rafters that I would, every uh, national anthem that I would visualize the, the 2024 one going. And that started in the preseason. 
And so we were able to just kind of pinpoint that and you just take in, you know, what, what the city brings, what the arena brings, everything that comes with, you know, being a Celtic. And last night was like the culmination of like, you see the shirt I'm wearing with like red and, and Bill Russell, like culmination of history, the culmination of like greatness that mm -hmm. you uh, get to be a part of now. Yeah. The, um, so, so I saw too on the whiteboard, before the game, you guys had flight at noon to Miami. Was I feel like you're a superstitious guy? And that was that, not before the game. Oh, that wasn't before the game. No, no, okay, no, all right, good. That was, all right. that was after the game. Okay, all right. Because I was like, when I saw that, I was like, no way did Coach Missoula let, let them do this before a closeout game. All right, so you were still before the game. It was still jobs. You know, you guys better get ready. Let's go. No, absolutely. Yeah, no, that, that that came on right after the game. Okay, all right. That's that's fair. That's fair. What uh. So you did. You're down in Miami now. What movie did you watch on the way down to Miami? Um, we we didn't watch one. We had we had the uh, the Beats pill going and just had all the music. So just, just okay. But one of the things are in our in the the back locker room before games, all the coaches sit in the same room and each coach picks a different playlist, and we just bump music back there the whole time, play a little soccer, listen to music, and uh, so every player's got his. I mean, every coach has his favorite song or favorite playlist. So we were in the coaches section, just kind of going back and forth on, on all the songs that we listen to throughout the year. All right, so you haven't been able to watch the town as a world champion yet? Not yet. Okay, that's got to be – are you going to cry maybe? Like, that's got to so be watched, different. I, so I actually watched The Departed the night before Game 5. <laughs> okay. And the, the quotes from that – like, you can't really say those that much anymore. Mm -hmm. But the quotes from The Departed, like, it's just every other line is something that you wish you could say out loud again. That movie's <laughs> – I love that movie. So I watched that one before game five, getting ready, um, you know, for, for it. And uh, I haven't watched the town, but someone asked me and my new favorite scene is when like, they're about getting ready to rob Fenway. And he's like, he's like, you know, this is going to be hard. Right. And he's like, if you're an easy kid. Everybody would do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. How, how was it for the team and for you after Friday night, after that, you know, game four, which was, I mean, it was a, uh, ass kicking but you guys still had control of the series and you're going back home like did you was there i would assume there's no panic but that that had to be at least a little shocking in the manner it happened not really i mean we had had a couple of those throughout the year i think sometimes you lose perspective and like that loss allowed us to to keep perspective like we had won 10 games in a row in the playoffs which like doesn't happen we had only lost two playoff games up until that point and, you know, I had really trusted our team because like they, they we bounced back from like small adversities and small times of not playing our best. Like we did it. We had a game like that at Milwaukee. We had a game like that home against New York. I think we had two games. Like I think both games against Milwaukee uh, were like that. So, um, you know, it wasn't no room for, for panic or anything like that. It was more kind of like, OK, like, you know, why did this happen? And then really trust the guys because we've been able to bounce back before, but also just keep in perspective, like what we've been able to do throughout the playoffs up to that point was really, really hard. And you just got to know that it's, it's never going to be that easy, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So would you almost rather get your ass kicked like that or, or lose a close one? No, I'd rather get my ass kicked than lose a close one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like that's you, good. You, you lose a close one, guys play 40, 42 minutes. They're tired. You know, you got to travel back. Like, you know, you get, get blown out, take the guys out. They play 25 minutes, get the boys some rest. And, uh, you know, kind of regroup the next day. That, that, that couldn't have worked out better for us. Yeah, you were talking about soccer a second ago. I, I read that you had uh, Pep Guardiola in the stands and that you two have been – you've been talking, right? No, yeah, we've uh, we've been friends for, you know, two years now. He's a beast, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Yeah. So did he help you with anything? Um, He did. So I think the way he uh, – so if you don't – his story, he, um, he was the Barcelona's, uh, you know, lack of a better phrase, like JV coach. And when they fired their first team coach, they promoted him from within. And he got the Barcelona job when it was at its prime. They had just come off a Champions League. And instead of going out to get a bigger name, they got a guy like they got him, someone from the inside. And so I had always studied his career because, you know, that that happened. And if someone hires from within of a company like that, you know, they're obviously a special guy. So and they had so much success so fast. Like, I think they won five trophies in their first year. They won 12 in the four years that they were there. And so uh, a lot of our conversations were really built upon how he handled that first year, like how he handled success at such a young age as a coach, how he handled coaching Messi at such a young age and, and the other superstars that he had, how they gelled and then how he's built long term success at, um, you know, Manchester City. 
And so he was just able to give like great perspective on greatness, how to like start it, how to sustain it, and then how to handle like the ebbs and flows of it uh, when it doesn't go your way. And then like the way he, the way he coaches his teams, uh, the tactical stuff, uh, very, very similar. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the loudest moment last night, uh, other than the, the, the final buzzer was when Peyton Pritchard hit the half court shot. At what point in the last couple of years did you realize that this is uh, like a secret weapon that you can uh, unleash on the other team? Because it was so funny watching from our perspective. You see Peyton get checked in, and we're like, "Well, he's going to hit this because that's yeah. what he's been doing." What, what it, like, tell me how when when did that light bulb go off? Like, oh, this is our end of half guy who can do this. So there's a stat um, around like when you don't shoot the ball at the end of the quarter, your percentage of winning goes down. And our player development coach. Uh, who works with uh, Peyton and Sam and some of the other guys? They like they study those type of stats because a lot of the 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 bench guys you have your second unit lineups are in at the end of quarters. So your starters usually aren't in at the end of the quarter, and so he, we were able to find those stats. And our player development staff and 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 Peyton and Sam and those guys take great pride in those little details, and we were able to take advantage of that throughout the season. It's a credit to Peyton because he, like it's the ultimate competitiveness, the ultimate humility. Uh, to take that shot. And I, I promise you, and I said this to Peyton uh, during the series, there's never a shot that he shoots that I don't think is going in uh, yeah. because, of, because of his work ethic and because of his confidence. Like every shot he takes, I think is going in, whether it's a layup, three-pointer, or from half court. We'll get back to Coach in a second. He's brought to you by the global phenomenon known as House of the Dragon. That's right, the HBO original series, House of the Dragon, is back Prepare for a summer of dragons. The acclaimed series is returning. It's got more betrayal, more shocking twists, of course, even more dragons. Following the brutal mur- murder of Rhaenyra's son, House Targaryen is split into two warring factions. Westeros is on the brink of civil war. With House Targaryen divided, the kingdom must choose to support King Aegon's claim to the Iron Throne or back Queen Rhaenyra's return to power after she's sent to exile. There are two sides to every story, and when both sides have dragons, the choice is to bend the knee or burn. Don't miss the show everyone's talking about Sunday nights. Season 2, House of the Dragon, is now streaming on Max. To go even deeper into the world of Westeros, listen to the official Game of Thrones podcast on Max or wherever you get your podcasts. And now, here's more Coach. Yeah, and a lot of guys, I think, don't like to take those shots because they're, you know, low percentage shots for the most part might impact the shooting percentage. And Peyton's just like, give me the ball. Give me the rock. I'll do it. Yeah. This is what I do. Yeah. I make these. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Settle a debate for us. Uh, Game four, if you guys were winning. Yeah, here's the debate. So game four, if you guys are winning, uh, would you have maybe put Chris Stops in just to let him be on the court for a clinching game? Because Hank here – thought you were using Kristaps as a human victory cigar and that was the only way he was going to get back in the series we would have used him in like one of four or five different situations like so if if there was a critical uh jump ball like that we needed to win like there was a jump ball in our offensive possession uh we would have put him in if there was an end of game situation where he had to guard the rim or like be over the ball to try to get a deflection and yeah, like if we were winning, I would have put him in the game for a minute or two, and uh, just because you like he he sacrificed his whole career. Hank was right. He sacrificed his whole career to get to this point, and to not be a part of it uh, would have just devastated him. And like he had a serious, serious injury, and like he worked his ass off to get back. And like what he brought for us in Game Five was like unbelievable, and and really led to winning. And so like we have a guy in his career that's been through a lot and sacrificed a lot. Like, you want them to be a part of it. So, yeah, I would have used KP in game four uh, under those circumstances. So, it, it's nothing new for this show, but Hank was right, and uh, Max, our producer, the Sixers fan who got upset at Hank for saying that, was wrong. So, another loss for Max. <laughs> That's another loss for Max. <laughs> I mean, Hank knows ball. What can I say? Yeah. How, how bad was the injury? Was he were, – were the trainers saying, like, you can't play on this? And he was like, no, I'm going to play? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's kind of how it was, but it was like, we don't know how long the series is going to go on for. Like, let's try to uh, save him from himself because he was trying to play. Uh, so let's see if we can get through a game or two. And then like when it was game five at home, it was like, hey, like, you know, this might be it. Like, I, I got to be out there. And so, you know, he was like, I'm, I'm playing. And so he uh, overrode the medical team there and was just like, I'm playing. 
and uh, credit to him. Tough yeah. guy. So this might be a really dumb question. So I'm saying that in, in advance. Is there a small part of you that wishes that you had lost more games in the NBA Finals? <laughs> no. Not even, not, not even a little bit. Part. Not even a little bit. Where you're like, man, that would have been sick if we had gone down, if we had lost the first game, and then we fought back. I mean, I do wish for things to be a lot harder, but no. Once we got to the finals, I was like, man, I'll take the easy way if we can. All right, smart answer. Dumb okay, question. Shame on me, though. Yeah. Shame on me. Yeah, you're getting soft. So, uh, yeah. is there was there? <laughs> la- I I doubt last night you gave a speech, but after the parade on Friday, is it Friday's the parade? After the parade yeah. on Friday, will you? Uh, get the team together and be like, hey, guys, fun's over. Time to get back to work. Um, Well, some of our guys will play in the Olympics. Yeah. Uh, um, but uh, no, I won't do that. Okay. So you have I'd gotten soft. To. You've gotten soft. I'd love to. <laughs> I, I would love to. I mean, I was joking around in the, in the locker room after yesterday. I said, like, guys, we're behind here. Like, you know, every other team's been, they started workouts, individual workouts. We're still worried about last season. Yeah. Like, you know, we're behind. Like, sounds good, but... You know, nobody cares. A week from now, it would be zero and zero. Yeah. Who, who, if you were to put odds on it, who do you think from the team is going to uh, make the biggest splash at the victory parade? Who's going to be the one that we're going to get all the videos of and be like, holy shit, this person's having the time of their life? Got to be KP, right? Yeah. 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 I, was, I was thinking Cornette. Oh, yeah, Luke Cornette. Ooh, or or Sfee. Sfee's a, a wild card there. Okay. Hank, do you have any questions for Coach? Hank Hank is just – He's on cloud nine. He's a winner. Yeah. I mean, that's a pretty arrogant stance right there. He's leaning back. At his... <laughs> oh, no, I was just listening. I was, oh, thinking, I was like, taking well, it all in. I was taking been, it all in. Listen. He can't exist, Coach. Coach, he, the earliest Hank's ever gotten into this office was this morning just so that people would ask him about the game. He was wearing head-to-toe Celtics gear, just walking around hoping people would bring it up. Hey, how long have you been a C's fan? Uh, I grew up in Massachusetts, so – all my life, specifically after 2008. I mean, people, you, you can't explain to people what it's like being a Celtics fan. No, I loved your quote uh, when you were talking to the media saying, you know, it's when they were talking about people, you know, coming at you and, and, the, and the Jays, and you said it's Boston, I wouldn't want it any other way. I grew up here, I know what it's like. When you obviously, uh, you know, wanted to be a head coach, I think your your old LinkedIn page is still active. I don't know if you saw that, but it, it had like your kind of write up where it's like, I, I want to help players, personal training, and eventually be a head coach. Was your dream to be a Celtics head coach, or was that something that you know was was unfathomable at the time? Um, so we had a like a prayer board that my wife and I put up, and it was only like it was the Celtics. Uh, it was like be a head coach for the Celtics. We were very 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 specific. I actually had this. Uh, vision board uh, that a friend of mine worked on and the three things on there were the Larry O'Brien trophy the Celtics logo and then a picture of Brad because I wanted to work for Brad I wanted to work for the Celtics and I wanted to win a championship with the the you know tutelage of Brad and for the Celtics and those three things have been on there for like 10 years what was the uh, what was the biggest thing that helped you break through into like getting to Brad Stevens like how how did you make that happen what was the biggest part of that that led to you even getting in the in the door um so he this is actually a funny story uh we played against well we played in the same final four and the point guard at uh for butler at the time was ron norad and he had just left the celtics to go be an assistant at northern kentucky and northern kentucky and like fairmont uh were is relatively close and they were both d2 so we were kind of recruiting the same type of guys even though they were getting ready to go d1 and i kind of knew of him and he had just left the Celtics to go to NKU. And I walk under the basket and I'm like, you just did the dumbest thing I've ever seen in coach. You just left the Celtics to go to wherever it was that you were. And we kind of struck a relationship from there. And um, long story short, he tried to hire me in Brooklyn when he got the G League head job. Didn't work out. And then he kind of made a call for me. And so that's kind of how I ended up in Maine was, um, you know, door closed in Brooklyn. He made a couple calls to some people and then I was able to get in in Maine and get under the Celtics kind of, you know, franchise from there. Yeah. I mean, it, the, your story is incredible. And the, and the, like they, they were showing it last night that you were coaching high school and then the main red claws a few years ago. Like when do you think this will kind of set in that you are a NBA champion head coach? Like that's just, it's awesome. Yeah. I mean, it, it, you, it's funny. Like people say, enjoy it. And, and I don't really like that is different for different people. Uh, so I don't really know yet. Uh, I think the biggest thing is making sure you don't change. Like you don't like uh, become too much of an asshole. Yeah. Even more than I, even more than I already am. Uh, so you try to just stay consistent. I think is important. 
Uh, you try not to skip steps in the process. So like you got to coach the same way. And uh, I think it would be more like how you treat people. Like I think if um, I, said, I really want to make sure that I just continue to try to treat people the right way and not like, because it's, like just because you win this doesn't mean you're better than other people. You know what I mean? Like there's plenty of great people and coaches that uh, have done great things and they haven't won. So just because you win doesn't mean you're better. And so I think the important thing is like recognizing that and, and kind of staying in your lane, you know? Well, it, it does mean that you were better this year. <laughs> For one year. But... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you yeah, were so, literally better. But I mean, over the course of like, you know, you're not better than other people. Like, <laughs> right, you know, right, right. As a human. But you should but at I, least acknowledge that you were better this year. Yeah, we were. We were a better team this year. <laughs> yes, yes. You can't can run give, from that. You can give so yourself Hank, that. Hank, we were talking about the Boston media. Mm-hmm. So one of the scenes uh, me and Tatum kind of watched because we both like um, the Dark Knight mm-hmm. and the Dark Knight Rises. So like when we were working on like, okay, you know, this is how we're going to handle like expectations, pressure. Like this is what, this is what we need to do. So we're watching a scene where uh, Batman goes into the interrogation room with Joker and like they're talking and Batman's like, why do you want to kill me? And like the Joker starts laughing at him. He's like, I don't want to kill you. He's like, I he's like, I need you. He's like, you complete me. And it was like the coolest moment of like you, like good and evil has to coexist uh, differences have to coexist in order to bring the best out of each other and the people around you. So, like, Dark Knight, great movie. Yeah. Great movie. You were, so you're watching yeah. Batman with uh, Jason Tatum. That's interesting. Uh, just the scene. That's one of his favorite okay. movies. Show him the clip. Okay. Got it. Interesting. Got it. Who, between uh, Jason Tatum and uh, Jalen Brown, who's Batman? Who's the Joker? Uh, I, I want to be the Joker. Okay, okay. You're the Joker. Okay, so wait, Fuck is there you. any other options? No, just Batman two, and Joker. Okay. I think they're the only two ones. Yeah. yeah, we have two Batmans and I'm the Joker. Two okay. Batmans, two and Batmans. The Joker. So the Batmans win easy. If two Batmans against the Joker, I don't know. The Joker's willing to like the the issue with Batman is is like he's not willing to do whatever it takes. Like he, he there's like that's the scene where he has a chance to throw him off the cliff at the end of the second one, and he doesn't do it. He saves his life, and so like the scary thing about Batman is like. Is he willing to go the extra mile to do what's necessary for the greater good? Mm, like yeah, he, that sounds like some summer motivation for for both your guys. And like that's the danger part of Joker is like he's willing to go the extra mile to get his point across, whether it's like healthy or not, which and you know it's not. But like Batman's not willing to go the extra mile. Oh. Yeah, that's a good point. You are the Joker in that relationship. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So so Jalen <laughs> yeah. and Jason will listen to this and be like, wow. So we have to. We have to kill we just coach. We're told that we have to go the extra mile yeah. and kill coach. <laughs> yes. You'd probably like that, you sick fuck. Uh, Derek That's White. That's going to be your motivation heading into the next season. We got to kill Joe to win. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Derek White and uh, and his teeth. I thought it was uh, it was an all time like almost a hockey guy moment on the basketball court. The smile after the game was was very funny. Did he is he get his teeth fixed before the parade, or is he just going to enjoy this time? Hopefully he has time. I mean, we got to Miami here, so he's not going to have time today. I mean, that's his fault. He shouldn't have gotten hurt. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he knows that. He knows that. Yeah, the floor he is right know. there. It's a big floor. Watch out for it. Yeah. Don't have time to get hurt in the end game five, the NBA finals. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, so we had a couple last questions. Thank you so much for joining us. I know that you, you got a million things to do. I was to dying do. to do it during the playoffs, but I, 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 I'll do this. When I'm done, I'm just gonna come hang out with you guys. Yeah, yeah come we. By. Well, th- that was the last time we talked was right before the Bulls played in their play-in game, and we were making plans for you to come and and tap us out if the Bulls had gotten into the playoffs. So I I hope that still stands that when you're back yes. in Chicago, you can, you can. I'll get, be there. Yeah, we can get the mat out. Um, Hank, we had Derek and Peyton Pritchard on uh in february i believe and mm-hmm. hank said that he was going to shave his head if you guys win the title he said when they win the when title. they I win the title back, yeah. so how long do you think hank has to to make good on this 24 hours oh, oh wow and that's from coach joe missoula well i, I, mean, I was thinking because i want to i want i want to, 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 to commemorate <laughs> well to commemorate the bet i'm, I'm gonna do it uh banner night i'll, I'll be in the uh-huh. building no, oh, but, no, 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 oh, no, because then we're on the next season. Wait, because yeah, yeah, yeah. then now your people like you, Hank, will be the reason why we struggle next year. Because <laughs> you're back, we're trying to get ready for the next season. Oh, oh, yes, great coach. point. I mean, coach. this is, is coming straight from Coach. That's he just won you a title, point. and you're gonna and you're gonna go against what he wants here. People like but you, twenty four hours, Hank. Twenty four hours. What do you say to that? Come on, Hank. <laughs> you can do both. Well, you know what? I think I, let's let's give him a little leeway here. Let's say until the parade is over. 
Okay, that's fair. All right, so you have till Friday afternoon. <laughs> Friday afternoon, because after the parade's over, right? We turn the page. Getting, it's next season already. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we don't. Yeah, we don't need Hank. You know, putting out things about last year during that banner night, like. It's next season. Right. You're looking yeah, back, yeah, you're yeah. still celebrating what happened already. <laughs> summer, yeah. summer of Hank just took a twist. <laughs> oh, he's mad. No, but he no. has to listen yeah, to his coach. I do have to listen to you're the one guy who can tell him what to do. <laughs> hey, Hank, whatever it takes, however long it takes. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll be at the parade with the shaved head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh Hank is so... You're so angry right yeah, now. Yeah, no, no, no. Hank, it, it, it would be an honor for me to shave my head if any of my teams won a championship. Yeah. I mean, Hank, I think this is a huge uh, moment for us because you're going to lead the charge on, on, like, okay, we won now. It's like the next. We got to get ready for the next thing. I think, like, you shaving your head is the beginning of us turning the page to get ready. Yeah. The, the longer you play that, the longer we're living in the past. The 24-25 yeah. Celtics season basically hangs in the balance with Hank's head. Yes. Yeah, all that your, your, your ability to stay present and not focus on the past. All right. that, all that hair that's grown out of your head, Hank. That's last season's hair. Yeah, that's you gotta, you yeah. gotta do all new hair. All right, yeah, we'll see you Friday, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> you bring one of those hoodies for me. I like those. Yeah, the yeah. Got you. I'll, I'll hand deliver them. Are you going to the parade? I am now. I mean, I. I all right, I, so maybe we get Hank. Maybe we get Hank to an after party with the shaved head. We figure that yeah. out. Go. No. Okay. We'll make it work. That's a good. That's a good deal, Hank. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what? If that's what? Yeah. How bad do you want to win? Hank? I bad, bad. I'm in. I'm in. I'm, I'm ready for. I'm ready for 19. I'm ready for 19 too. <laughs> yes, yes. This How is this is a great win? twist. I love this because oh. he was trying to weasel his way out of it, but he can't anymore. Oh, when the minute we the minute the the coach said he could come on, I was like, this is the one guy that I know. If he says it to I, Hank, yeah, he Hank cannot go against. Him. He just put the alpha male challenge on you. Yeah, yeah. and I'm, I'm going to answer the bell. He put you in the box yeah, that's what it's all about hey <laughs> uh coach what you should do is you were talking about having to like main, maintain the same guy that you were before you won the championship moving forward you were talking about how nice your house is and how you were thinking maybe you had to destroy it you got to destroy burn, part burn of your house burn it down <laughs> yeah <laughs> over again. uh all right so last question this has been so much fun thank you so much coach for joining us uh it's a rowback question rhoback.com Promo code TAKE, 20% off your first purchase, Q-Zips, polos, hoodies, joggers, shorts, Roback.com, promo code TAKE. Uh, are you going to allow yourself to maybe buy something or go on a vacation? Like, you got to give yourself something, right? Um, so, I mean, I'm going to take my, my youngest to uh, Disney World. Okay. I I, you know, that, he's, at, he's seven, so he's at the age where, I mean, that, that's going to be fun. Yep. Uh, going to the Olympics to see some of our guys. Okay. And then this is our 10 year wedding anniversary. Uh, so we're going to plan a trip for my wife. You know, I'm, I'm, I like to consider myself the more romantic type. As she laughs in the background. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. So um, what's more romantic than a little Olympic basketball? I, who are you telling? What's more romantic than being at the garden every night? Yeah. I mean, you're, yeah. well, you're she can decide. Paris. You should give her the choice uh, Olympic basketball or Disney World. On the way up here, I was holding the trophy, and I was like, "Can we sleep with this one night?" <laughs> yes. Can the, three of us, can the three of us hang out. Yeah. yeah. So, what, what is protocol with the trophy? Do you get do you get like alone time with the trophy? Does it get passed around like the Stanley Cup? Uh, I mean, some of the guys have been hogging it a little bit, which they should be. So, I mean, I had my time. I got a couple pictures with it. I gave it a kiss, uh, but it just kind of passes itself around. Yeah, I would. I would just. I would be a hog of that trophy. Yeah. I, well, then the other the other one I was supposed to, I am I got to figure out when I'm going to go to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got to go back there. Yeah, I got to figure it out. Um, all right. So my last last question, uh, Al Horford. We we're talking about him. Did you have any moments with fan. with him after? Where like you know, I mean, he's been in the league forever, and this is just an unbelievable moment for him. There's not a guy. I don't think there's a better guy in the league. Um, he's awesome. So the moment I got to be on stage was me and my son, him and his son, and uh, his his wife and. Uh, just all the work, like you can just see, like he's more of a guy where he doesn't say as much. You can just see it on his body, you can see it on his face, you can see it by his energy. It was just a really cool moment, uh, you know, for him to sacrifice everything that he has to be on stage there uh, and get that. That that was awesome. Yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's I'm, a, I'm forever grateful for him. Yeah, yeah. You guys were a, a very easy team to root for. I I do think that there was a part of you deep down inside that was like one more loss would have been nice. Just if you I give mean, us two games to overcome adversity. <laughs> 
Just two. Why not? Yeah, four to two. That's that's all you need. Well, congratulations, Coach. Yes. Congratulations. Oh, uh, yes. You, made, you. you made a lot of people very happy, and we're very happy for you. And you made us very happy for making Hank shave his head. Yep. Oh, dude, yeah. And Hank, thank you for setting the example for you know what uh, it means to, to be all in on winning and and uh, staying process oriented, not focused on the past, but just kind of worrying about you know what's next. So I, I really appreciate you doing that for us. Thank you, Coach. I die for you. Uh, I'll see you Friday. I'll, I'll bring some gear for you. <laughs> I can't wait, man. All right. Thanks so much, Coach. Thanks, Coach. Have fun. Later, guys. Coach Mazzullo is brought to you by Facebook. Everyone should explore their interests. If you do it on Facebook, there's a world of possibilities that open up to you when you tap into the people and the products on the platform. With Facebook Reels, you can discover so many sports tips and tricks that can seriously up your game. First and foremost is the people on Facebook. You can use marketplace groups and reels in your interest exploration. What's so amazing about Facebook is where it will take you. If you want to discover more, visit Facebook. Okay, we're going to wrap up the show. We've got a show announcement. Jake, you're sitting on the couch. I am. Welcome back to the couch. Thank you. It's not green. I don't have a fellow... Billy football by my side or a uh, snuggling partner remember, or a professional yeah, the, cuddler. Yeah. The cuddler was great. That was a great moment. Yeah. But yes, you're here. I'm here to uh, make an announcement. It's an announcement that is, I think what we all would have agreed was inevitable at some point. Um, and I think after talking with you guys now makes the most sense. And the fact of the matter is this is going to be my last episode on part of my take. What? Why didn't you tell us till right now? <laughs> we've we've actually been talking about this for like four or four five months. months. Yeah. Yes. So it's yes. it's been an ongoing discussion. Uh we loved having you on the show, Jake. You're a big part of the part of my take story. Uh it feel it does not feel like how many years has it been? Five years. It doesn't five feel years. like it's, it's been five years. five years. Which is what I would call wild. It is wild. So it's, uh, more than half the show, yeah. which is crazy to think yeah. about. And um, we're very glad that you're a part of the story, and you're going to continue to be. Yeah. And we, we, me and Big Cat have always said, like, one day you're going to go try to you know do live broadcasts, and we're going to wish you the best, and we're going to be firmly in your corner. And uh, and that's very very true to this day. Like I I wish you the best career possible. I hope one day you're calling a Super Bowl that we're watching and losing bets on. Yeah, that would be the best case scenario. And then, but you guys are winning. And then yeah. blaming you for losing our bets. Yeah. yeah. So we can get into the details. So there's no speculation. Yes. I know a lot of people might be surprised. A lot of people might not be just based on how closely they follow me, my career, and the show. Um, but basically, one of the biggest uh, dominoes for this happening right now is that. The direction that Barstool is going in, live broadcasting rights are no longer a priority Mm -hmm. for this company. And that's not a secret. You've talked about it. Dave talked about it. And obviously, that was my bread and butter here. That's where I thrive the most. I mean, I'm so fortunate that I got the chance to call multiple bowl games on national television, Mm -hmm. college basketball, hockey, professional golf that led to those PGA Tour events Mm -hmm. from the connections I made there. When you guys hired me as an intern five years ago to mock Darren Ravel, Mm -hmm. I never thought any of that was remotely possible. I was just here to say yes to whatever you guys wanted to prove that I was a hard worker and had this great opportunity on this massive platform. But you might get emotional. Uh, It's okay. Yeah. The fact here, that, here I'll, I'll help lighten the mood. Yeah, yeah. Remember, remember how bad your handshake was? Yeah, clammy hands. Yeah, yeah. I watched it back the other day, and <laughs> something that stuck out is one of you guys asked me, "Where do I see myself in five to ten years?" And mm-hmm. without hesitation, I said, "I want to be a national network play-by-play broadcaster." Mm-hmm. And that brings us to now, and that is where I'm going all in on. I've been on all in on it for a while. There's a reason why I don't curse on the air. There's a reason why Ray Allen tweet. I'm not going to do the Ray Allen tweets because when I was making this inevitable jump, it's so that I have no regrets. Mm-hmm. I have nothing to hide. And I am so proud of what I've done here in the five years. I've accomplished a lot thanks to you guys. And it has been an incredible ride. But doing it right now, making this jump, we all agree. It makes the most sense because it's the beginning of the summer. It's kind of like the off season in sports and broadcasting, right? Mm -hmm. So if I make myself publicly fully available right now, best case scenario, I'm in the booth calling college football this fall. Is that going to happen? Is that reality? I don't know. But 
the odds are going to increase yeah. by making this jump right now. Right. Yes. And 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 we we did start having these conversations back in February and March, so it's not uh, a sudden thing. I was joking when I said, "Wait, what? Why yeah. did you tell us right now?" Um, and we back in February, March, we basically were like, "What is the best way uh, for you to make this jump?" And this was always, "Hey, the NBA Finals is a good spot where you can have the summer and you can try to hopefully get something uh, in broadcasting." And I, I you know. I'll say this right now, anyone who wants to hire Jake, you're going to hire someone who works his absolute ass off. Sorry, ass. sorry for swearing. It's okay. Uh, who's committed and he does everything the right way. And I, I, you know, you will always, if anyone hires Jake, they, like you will have our support, Jake. You will have the AWL support. We don't want to, we want to see you have all the success in the world. And it's, it's one of those bittersweet moments where it's like having you on the show for five years which is more than half of the history of this show yeah has been awesome i watching you grow into uh what you are and like you know adapt and and have to go with the flow more has been very funny and enjoyable and i know you've grown as a person and i do think that you will be a better broadcaster for everything you did here i also think that you added a lot to everything we've done in the last five years and uh I'm excited for you because I, I do think that, you know, it's scary. It's very scary. It's scary. To I'm not going to lie. I'm scared. There is no clear cut plan for what's next. Right. But we've been talking. You guys have been amazing with your help and trying to make that a reality. Um, so the plan is uh, I'm going to leave Chicago. I'm going to go back home to South Florida as I try to figure out the next step. I think we all agreed that I don't regret. I'm so happy I gave Chicago a shot, but I moved here mostly because I wanted to be part of the team, part of you guys. So I feel like still being in the mix here, yeah. it might just get a little weird. Yeah. So yeah. But I, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I really do. I, I think it's the right time in, in your life, in the move. It's just like, I, I want to see you fulfill your dreams. And we had this conversation that it's like, as much as we love having you on the show, there's always going to be a foot in foot out that makes it difficult for you to right. go all the way in and be available all the time where someone can be like oh we want to hire jake to do this you always were testament to you you were always thinking the show first mm -hmm. now you should be a little more selfish and think yeah. jake first and I, I i'm i'm excited and i i, I truly love you and i, I you'll always have a, a home here and you'll always have our backing 100 percent. whenever yeah. you're on tv whatever events you're doing i i know you're you're doing some PLL stuff. This yeah, summer. I have a few PLL assignments this summer. Hopefully, uh, there's some more PGA on the table as well. And like I said, perfect world. The fall comes around. There's a, a million college football teams and games out there and networks. Yep. Hopefully, you know, you guys gave me the shot of a lifetime. No pun intended. Five years ago, you really did. This Nailed is yeah. such an impossible business. It is so hard and so competitive. And you have to think of ways to get really creative to stand out and you guys gave me that opportunity and like i said i'm proud of what i did with this opportunity i have zero regrets and now i'm just looking for someone else to give me my next shot in the booth the same way you guys and, and you'll get one you'll yeah. get one and uh you're you're very good at what you do and you put a lot of work into it and like big cat said whoever is out there if you're listening to this show and you're thinking well i've got you know i've got this one open spot for a game we don't have anybody lined up just yet or if there's a bigger, whatever the case may be, if you're listening to this, Jake Marsh will be the best worker that you'll ever hire. Thank you. He yeah, is. and he and won't do the Ray Allen tweet. Though. I won't do the Ray Allen tweet. And again, Which is bullshit. But I that's could fine. I could have caved just yeah. to make you guys happy, but now Put that on your resume. Jump, there is yeah. nothing I regret. Did Never, not do Ray Allen. Maybe if, during the day. Okay. What if? Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah. What if? What if CBS calls you and is like, hey. We want you to be part of uh, college football this fall. Okay. But we need you to do the Ray Allen tweet. But I have the job. Yeah. And I, like, that's for life. Well, not for life. I mean, <laughs> as long as it wouldn't. You got to be ready for this, Jake. They might throw this out at you. Then I'll do it. You do the <laughs> that's the reason I'm not doing it. Yeah, it's not true. because, like, I'm against what it says. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you oh, like what it says. Oh, yeah. Is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Let's go. Let's get freaky. I'm just saying. That's the yeah. only reason I'm not doing it. Also, it is multiple positions. You're also getting a guy that can lay the pipe. <laughs> No, but in all seriousness, like I know my role on this show. I know I'm a very small part of it, but it's been a major part of my life. And I owe you guys 
forever and this is not burning no, the bridge stop. no I, I i really mean that like no but you gave us stuff too so it's not it's a we all yeah. won with our relationship and our relationship isn't over like i said you're yeah. you're always a, a friend of the show and always have a home here and we'll always be rooting for you so and and spotlighting whatever you're doing next so that's that's never gonna change yeah and it is worth mentioning um for the next few months you two dave hank uh, we've come to the agreement that I'm still going to be employed by the company mm -hmm. and I'm really fortunate for that opportunity. I'm still going to be uh, active on social media, writing blogs for the website, still making golf videos, hopefully hit another hole in one on camera. Mm -hmm. First one. Second one. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll still be around the next few months, but it's all systems go. I'm looking for a full-time broadcasting job and hopefully it happens sooner rather than later. I yeah. love it. I think you'll get there. Yeah. yeah, and and when you're on TV, we will we will make sure to let people know so that they can follow you. Or also, just follow Jake on yeah. social media. Yeah, yeah. you guys yeah. are Jake letting me it. keep that Twitter account too, which is huge because it was if you do the Ray Allen tweet. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Just j they'll know where you're at. Yeah, but we will also remind people once you're on TV because you will be on TV. Yeah, you'll be calling a game, and we'll say with great pride, "There's Jake Marsh," and I and I'm gonna I'm gonna root so hard for yeah. a score, Gami. Yeah. Yeah, it's Vic Adams. No. I'll, it's all right. it's I'll all right. root for the first score. Only when Jake's on the score, Gami, I'll FaceTime you this year. That would be cool. Yes. I'm calling an NFL okay. game. Okay, all right, twenty years. <laughs> yeah, what? Well, I, I <laughs> will happens. be. I will be mad at you if you like do a call on a game that I'm gambling. You'll yeah, hear you from text me. Your best. Oh no, you, you'll well, hear from me. I know it's over. That's your system. What? Any oh, if I'm watching, yeah, over. yeah, that is, no that is what. true. One of my sisters. Um, what, what were you gonna say, Hank? Have you given any thought to the uh, the at name change? So PFT and I talked about this beforehand. I'm down to keep it indefinitely. Maybe there's probably a time where it will be appropriate to change it. I think at some point you should change. You don't need to change it just yet, but yeah. at some point you should. Yeah. But I think that would be a cool little thing for the AWLs. You might want to change it for yourself. Yeah, make but you can also just put, you know, that you were the. PMT sports. I mean, that, that's up to you. I that's might change, put in my alum, like uh, my uh, bio, part of my take alum. Right, yeah, right, like exactly. Because you might yeah. want to be like, hey, I would like that's my name what, to be there. That's what we talked about too is I'm not technically, I am technically leaving the show, but I'm kind of graduating from yeah. it. And I still have the ties permanently to part of my take, which mm -hmm. I'm so proud of. And you're like the safest bet that you won't do anything bad that will make us be like, wait, we're not associated with yeah. mm -hmm. I don't think we would give that to anyone else. Yeah. I, I would keep the handle for now if you want. Yeah. Uh, but then, yeah, change it. Because you got to you gotta go out there on your own. And this is something that you're doing. And it's going to be, this is going to be Jake Marsh on TV. It's not going to be part of my take on TV. Because right. on the other end of it, there are certain networks that might not want part in my take. That's right. As the host of whatever show yeah. it is. Yeah. But so, yeah, you gotta yeah, you spread your wings at some point, but there's no like no rush on that. What are you last thing, who's gonna do some of the tasks you did? Should we should we give it like who's gonna do Nerd numbers? Nugget? Oh my god. Well nerd I think you can take Nerd Nugget. No. <laughs> um yeah, it's okay. You, you could take um, it with you, the, but like reminders. I still have yeah. plenty of reminders. So, I can still tweet you guys when they pop up. Yeah, or you could. I, I would like to see someone fail at this. Uh, maybe Pug. Maybe Pug has to do the reminders because he he'll just be like, "I'm such a bitch. I was supposed to remind you this <laughs> a month ago and I forgot." Whatever. Wait, I have a few. I think. Can you can you just tell Pug right now? It, give us give us two give us two that you got off the top. Yeah, I'm looking. Quick reminders. This is uh, what were you gonna say, Max? Do you have anything to say? Uh, yeah, no. It's a sad day. Um, I know I was only joined with you in this booth for a couple months, but you know, if it always hurts to lose a member of the team, and uh, we're gonna miss you back here. But this yeah. is a good, this is a good one. Yeah, a good and one. again, yeah. I I've, I I thanked you guys, but you, the two of you and Hank, you gave me a break that I never saw coming. I never saw my career going in this direction, but I'm so happy and glad it did. And I learned so much about myself in this building. The first day you guys told me, you have to grow thick skin. It's the only way to survive here because of the massive platform. And I can say I've certainly done that. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, no, I think you've gotten, it's crazy to think about the, the changes and, and uh, yeah. they're all, all have been great. Yeah, so thank you guys. Uh, the four guys behind the glass, are with no doubt the hardest working crew in sports media. Well, These Hank, guys, Hank is behind Hank, the glass. Yeah, I forgot right now. Hank was there. Hold on. 
You didn't mean Hank. If if Jake, if you were in <laughs> Hank's, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. You meant, yeah. You, meant was, Shane, you meant Shane, you Pug, Max, and Memes. Hank well, is Hank, sitting right there. What I was gonna say is, be careful. I, He's got I, golf coming up. Not a lot of people know this. These guys are pulling nearly all nighters three they nights are. a week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's insane. We finish recording at two or three a.m. and we wake up. We go home at midnight. They're here till four in the morning. We wake up three hours after they go to sleep, and all the clips are done. The YouTube is up. Yeah. You, it's just you actually should you you need to text us in the fall and be, and tell us what it's like getting your Sundays back. Oh my god, that gonna, <laughs> that is going to be <laughs> interesting. That's like the I, one thing where I'm like, oh my god, it would be like every weekend feels like Sunday. a holiday. Yeah, yeah, I don't. I I actually think about that like the day yeah. that I retire where it's like, oh wait, I can watch football on my couch and then go to sleep. Yeah, after Sunday night football, that's crazy. Yeah. Um. But yeah, thank you to you guys. Thank you to the producers and thank you to the AWLs. You guys, every single in-person interaction I've had with you guys has been remarkable. You're the most loyal, passionate fan base in the world, really, more than any other sports team, I think, because these guys live and die by everything we say. They know every little detail about us, what we talk about on the show, and it's just so cool. I think Oilers uh, fan base is pretty good, too, though. I have a limited it amount of interaction but from what i remember they're pretty strong yeah mm -hmm. but i a lot of heart like, a lot of big big hearts yeah the yeah. same way my relationship with you guys in this room is not going to change i hope to continue making relationships with awls around town and seeing all of them and talking about pmt and talking about sports i just think it's such a cool dynamic and connection that you really can't find anywhere else. You know, it'd yeah. be a very funny twist uh, if Jake wrote a tell-all book about PMT. Oh, afterwards. there's really nothing made, I can yeah. think of that just would be, be like, what uh, we order for dinner on Sunday? Yeah. Uh, surprising. But, but Jake, we, we love you, and best of luck, and uh, I look forward to seeing you do great things. Yes. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Flourishing. It's, it's a scary told, time, but it's an exciting time. I told you from day one, it's 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 the Goodwill hunting. That one day, I hope you're just like, yeah. hey- I got it. I'm I'm going out, and I'd be like, "That's great. That's, Leave us fucking idiots to here." No, you guys are not idiots. You're Just sitting here being idiots and losing our money. Geniuses yeah. when it comes to sports media I don't success. Know. The G word is not correct. Yeah, but do you want you take back the Hank hardworking? Uh, Hank's hardworking. For, at what? for my first three at years, what? he was pulling all nighters. I'd walk in on Monday morning. He's sleeping on the green couch. That's just because he was tired. Yeah, from staying up all night editing the podcast. Yeah, but then Very he was cool. the, he was Very the, cool. he was the first of our group to retire. He's in retirement. No. Basically, but um, <laughs> I'm proud of myself for not crying cuz I Yeah, no, that was big. I yeah. was going to cry. That was huge. You didn't. I didn't. You want to? No. Okay. okay. Well, <laughs> There'll be okay plenty of right time now. to cry later. Yeah. I think I'm like su Sunday night's going to be weird. Yeah, mm. but I feel like you might you do, might be like, this is kind of wrong. Go out for brunch? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because it was college, and then I had one year in between, and then yeah. here. So, yeah. like, my post-grad life, all but one year, has been here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Sundays, Sundays are a big part of that, but I wouldn't change a thing, and it's awesome. Yeah. Well, yeah. we love you, Jake. We love always you will love Thank you. Thank you. Best and, uh, in the office. Yeah. Best one here. Yeah. yeah. So many great That, that was a great handshake. That was a great memory. That was a great uh -huh. handshake. Yeah. yeah. Really good handshake. You're the best. And yeah, we, we'll always be Team Jake. And, and like I said, you'll always be a part of this. And uh, whenever you're back in town, you come by and say hello. And uh, I guess we got to do numbers, huh? Are you going to get this? This would be an all-time walk-off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. An all-time walk -off. What? I feel weird. Like, what if, if someone else wins, it feels weird. This would be awesome if Max won this. No, time. I want to give Jake my number. No, I want to give Jake my number. Should we all I already should have, should have a win? Should we all give Jake our number? Wait, why? I already Go have a win. Max, because this would feel so on. weird if Hold I won on. right now. Max, you just said you'd give Jake your number like your number's going to win? That's true. Like, come on. No, we got to uh, be men about it. And, and, and if anyone steals Jake moment, be a man about it. Uh, okay? I think, we should, I think we should retire number 18. No. And no, that kid. No, he's trying to. He's uh, taking well, better in, chances. In fairness, better How about this? Chances. In fairness, retire 18, but throw in a 101. Oh. So it's still 100. 18 could just be 101. When 18 hits, it's 101. Right, we'll put 18 up in the rafters. It's yeah. Jake. It, it, when 18 hits, it's 101. Great. Yeah. All right. Uh, numbers. 8. 20. 3. 56. Oh, I should have said 81. 81. You already said 56. Whatever. 96. All right. I'll say 56. What was your pick, Hank? 99 put. 96. Shane, what was it? 21. 
Shane tried to give me a bacon wrap plantain <laughs> off his fucking gross ass plate and was so confused why no one was eating it. Weirdo Shane. See, this is what you're leaving us with, Jake. You're reading, leaving us with weirdos like Shane. I'm a now weirdo. we get more Shane. I'm a Shane's weirdo. never eaten a banana till today. Yeah. He actually told me the other day that uh, the first grape that he had was last month. That's wild. One grape. One single grape he ate. That's crazy. 99 pug! Oh my god! <laughs> pug! You Damn. motherfucker, you pug! Dick, pug. Oh. You stole his moment, pug! God damn it, How pug. How could you? Now I'm definitely not sharing those reminders. <laughs> oh, what a fucking moment, pug! You god, This is for Jake, too. This is for all of us. Pug. You son of a bitch! <laughs> for the whole squad. That number is on pug. fire. On fire. Yeah, no sense of the moment, pug. Yeah. God damn, it's, Pug. It's, this, is, this is Jake's 99, too. It's all of our 99. No, no. No, pug. it's your 99, Pug. All right, it's mine, but. <laughs> <laughs> pug. How many, how many is that? That's like four. That's is four. that four? That's four. Yeah. God damn, Pug. All right, I think, wow. we should, I think we should let Jake. No, this is PFT. Yeah, no, 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 no. I don't time. want it. I don't want it. Jake. I'm passing the rock Come to on, you. Jake. I love Come on, you. Jake. Love you, Jake. Love you, too. Love you guys.